Hey guys, Matt Barton here with Match Yet episode 462, covering one of the great gems of computer role playing games Wizardry 6 Bane of the Cosmic Forge. Uh, now, this game is really kind of an undisputed masterpiece. It does have a few, uh, you know, a few vestiges, a few remnants of you, will, a few. Uh, aspects I guess they haven't aged uh, so well uh, but all in all though I think it's a tremendous value you can actually pick this sucker up right now 75% off on GOG I don't know when you'll be watching this but uh, check it because it's only two bucks right now for this one and the sequel I mean absolutely fantastic deal uh, anyway I had a really great time with this I mean who who wouldn't if you like uh, classic computer role-playing games uh, there's a lot of stuff in here if you haven't played it before uh, that you should probably should know before you uh, jump in. Uh, so feel free to watch this video <laughs> and, and learn all about those things to make your life a lot more uh, a lot more pleasant uh, jumping into this uh, than just going in raw. I'm trying to avoid spoilers and things of that sort, but you know there might be a few little things. Uh, but anyway, we got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Bane of the Cosmic Larva. All right, folks. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be tucking, tucking into one of the uh, greatest of all computer role-playing game franchises. And uh, the game today is it, its interesting, it's fun, it's certainly challenging, and it's only a buck fifty. Actually, it's even cheaper than that if you really hop on this right now, because it's 75% off, and you get not only the game we'll be playing today, the classic Wizardry 6 Bane of the Cosmic Forge, uh, but you're also getting the seventh game which many people uh, consider even more challenging, and it's certainly got some uh, bells and whistles that Six One doesn't have. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, even if you don't intend to play the game, it's worth a buck fifty just to get the materials and have it on hand just in case you uh, overcome that craziness and decide that you would like to give uh, Wizardry Six a try. Uh, I'm not going to... We're going to be delving into the game, obviously, here. I always like to flip down and look at some of the reviews, and you see people are just ecstatic about it. No, uh, no less a source than Ravenheart, and <laughs> calls it a masterpiece. Uh, Wizardry 6 and 7, two of the best CRPGs ever made. Uh, there's a lame 77, role-playing heaven, love this five star. So, I mean, the reviews are all looking uh, really, really good, uh, and it's a buck fifty. So, so go pick it up. Uh, but if for some reason a buck fifty is a lot of money for you, <laughs> I don't think it's possible. <laughs> Seems like one of the best deals in gaming to me. But uh, uh, you can certainly watch this video and uh, enjoy it vicariously, uh, or check it out just see if it's something that would be, you know, worth your time. It's not just money, of course. You know, it's also the uh, the time. And this is a game that rewards uh, being careful, reading, uh, planning things, taking your time with it. It's not a you know, rush, rush uh, sort of experience. <laughs> Delayed gratification. Uh, I will actually be playing this. I usually like to play these games in the uh, in the raw, as it were, as the developer intended them to be played. But in this case, I'm going to make an exception because there's just such an exceptional mod available. Wizardry 6 auto mapping mod. So you can download the GOG package and follow the instructions and get this set up. I'll be using it. And as you can see, it's an auto mapper. And it also fixes a few little issues uh, with the DOSBox settings that you download. Uh, uh, the default package from GUG has a few little issues with, with speed. This fixes that. Add some tool tips and some other cool stuff. I, you know, I just think it's a really wonderful add-on. Makes the game a lot more playable. You know, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out here to this creator, Koratami. At least uh, he's the one that's credited on this. <laughs> It's, uh, let's see, there's a mod to slightly improve that. Start the game in Steam, so that's just the instructions. Uh, but anyway, definitely get this mod. It's free. You can download it from, uh, I guess this is mod, moddb.com. Just look for Wizardry 6 Auto 6 Mod. Uh, and then I'll also be off and on consulting some maps, you know, just to make sure I'm on the right page. Uh, in addition to uh, what I'm about to show you now, if I can get this pulled up here. Uh, I mentioned that this is a game... Yes, here we go. 
you know, this is a 1990s game, folks. Uh, this is before uh, there was a lot of in-game tutorials. Uh, there's not tool tips. <laughs> uh, the developer actually, ex can you believe it? They actually expected you to sit down and read the manual. That might sound tedious, might sound boring, but uh, it's really not the case because as you could probably see here just from the way they've set up this cover, uh, it's it's basically written like a Dungeon Master's or Dungeons and Dragons book. You know, have the Player's Manual, uh, the Dungeon Master Guide, uh, or is it, yeah, Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, and those are, you know, if you're a fan of D&D, &D, you, you love those books. It's not just like instructions in there. It's just they're fun to read. It's part of the hobby. Uh, you know, especially when they're well written and go into uh, all the sorts of detail to really get, you know, get you in that mindset where you're, fin you know, finessing with character development and thinking long term about how you want to develop these characters. Uh, and the creator of this game, I want to make sure we mention him, uh, Mr. D.W. Bradley. Man, I talk about somebody I'd love to get on the show. Just, uh, you know, if anybody knows how to get in touch with him, by all means, <laughs> please share. I've tried for years <laughs> uh, to reach out to him. Just, if nothing else, email him a few questions I have about his work. But uh, anyway, there's a picture of him. Uh, nice mustache. You know, looks like an 80s action hero to me. Uh, David W. Bradley. Uh, so just briefly... Uh, he is, uh, you know, he says in this interview he had spent 10 years playing uh, different role-playing game systems and he wanted to create his own. Uh, he, of course, entered the Wizardry franchise with the, the game before this, Heart of the Maelstrom. Um, but what had happened was, the, unlike Ultima, where Lord British and Richard Garriott, you know, they always wanted each new game. Did I say Lord British and Richard Garriott? <laughs> it's the same person. Uh, anyway, uh, the Ultima games, the deal was... They wanted each game, Ultima 1, 2, 3, on, you know, on, on, down, the, on, on down the row, uh, to be quite different, to be a leap forward, represent the new uh, level of computer graphics, uh, computer technology, memory <laughs> interface. <laughs> so one thing you can definitely say about <clears throat> Lord British, I mean, the guy's a genius, you know, let's just put that out there, but also he was uh, ambitious. And he was not the type of guy that would just uh, want to, wanted to reuse the same resources, the same engine over and over again, and just bring in some new uh, campaign elements. Uh, that was the opposite uh, strategy than the Wizardry series. Uh, Woodhead and Greenberg, and I've had Woodhead on the show. You can go back and look at that in the Serotech, Robert Serotech interviews to learn more about this. But uh, they basically wanted to just, once they created this engine for Wizardry 1, uh, they wanted to just keep reusing that, you know, bring in new campaigns and new maps, new monsters and stuff like that, uh, but not just keep reinventing the, you know, the, the engine, basically. Uh, so that was fine all the way up um, through Heart of the Maelstrom, but really by 1990, it really just wasn't viable anymore. Uh, the PC technology had evolved to the point where nobody was going to be satisfied to play that old, you know, wireframe, wizardy-looking thing anymore. Um... So this is a this was a where David David W Bradley comes in. Uh, the original Wizardry guys have moved on, so it kind of gets left to him to create uh, this this new iteration, this next generation Wizardry game. Uh, and apparently they wanted to call it Bane of the Cosmic Larva. I, I kind of like Bane of the Cosmic Larva. <laughs> I think that would have been a pretty uh, a pretty fun name for this. Uh, but of course they went with a. Uh, Bane of the Cosmic Forge, but I love this, the clue book for this game, and, you know, all this comes with a good old games dot, dot package, but as you can see, it's, it's also written sort of in character, and again, they, a lot of the fun of these games is to read the manuals, to read the, uh, the clue books, uh, just all the little inside jokes, all the little humor, uh, if you don't have to go in and look at the maps and stuff if you don't want spoilers, but it just gives you a lot of good tips in here, about how to build parties and there's places you can write down your uh, uh, you know keep track of uh, your characters and stuff I don't know why you do that nowadays but you know it is that that sort of game it's not all that different than like a regular tabletop Dungeons and Dragons game where you would uh, you know have some notepads out maybe some graph paper character sheets and you know really be putting a lot of thought into it it's about as far from a run and gun uh, type of game as you can get. Uh, it's, it'll be very challenging as you'll see. 
Uh, and also a lot of the material in this manual, like even the interface, you, you, it's not even clear like how, <laughs> what these buttons are across the top of the row. Uh, I'll be trying to cover them in this in this video, but uh, just don't forget if you don't know what something does, it's not you're not dumb or anything like that. It's just it's printed in the manual, and it may not be anywhere else. So if you're lost, you don't know what don't, don't know what something does, you have to look at the manual. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Uh, I know they talk about the classes. Now, one of the interesting things about this game, I haven't really delved into this part, but once you start really getting into it and looking at uh, forums and discussion boards and you know facts, FAQs and whatnot, uh, they talk about a lot of uh, sort of what I would call advanced strategies. And one of them is to uh, you start off with one profession, switch into another profession. You can switch all these professions up several times to try to maximize your uh, abilities and stats. It's a little bit complicated. It doesn't really play into the game until uh, much later than the uh, first bit. But you know, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, there's a lot here to build on if you really love that uh, idea of really... Uh, you know, getting into the mechanics of the leveling system and the, the profession change system is just quite a bit. Um, and also, it's it's one of those games that is so uh, difficult. You know, it is, it is quite challenging, and it's easy to create a party that won't be viable. And unfortunately, not all of these. It's not like, uh, you know, we'd call it well, we'd probably call this game very unbalanced uh, today, frankly. Because uh, there's certain race and, and gender, you know, yes, yes, even gender plays into the mechanics with this. Uh, but if you pick a, a certain combination of profession, race, and gender, it might just not be viable. You might not be able to get too far, or, or it'll be so, you know, that character will be dying all the time and uh, be extremely uh, difficult to play. Um, there's no way to, uh, or you can resurrect the dead character, but there's some penalties with that, so it's pretty much unanimous that you should just reload if a character dies. And that's not even as easy as you might think because you only get the one save game. I guess you could sort of cheat with a, you know, going into the files and doing it that way. Uh, but we're not going to do anything like that. There's, to, to me, there's a fine line uh, between playing a game as it's meant to be played and maybe using a few add-ons that make it a little bit more enjoyable, sort of quality of life uh, sorts of improvements. Uh, versus just flat out cheating or, you know, what they call cheesing the mechanics. You know, some of the walkthroughs, for example, say you should download a, an editor program called, I think it's Mad Dog. And that will let you um, tinker with your stats without having to go through this character creation uh, process and <laughs> some other things. Uh, to me, that's crossing the line. You know, I don't want to use something like that. Uh, so anyway... We'll uh, move on here and get to the game, but just remember, you know, keep the manual clue book handy. I, I just keep it open on the side somewhere so I can refer to it. You know, and one nice thing actually about having these digital versions, of course, you can just find what you're looking for with that. And it makes it a little bit faster, so even if you had the printed manuals, you might still want to have this uh, sitting uh, somewhere. Uh, anyway, let's get the game open and see what it's all about. All right, so here we are in the character creation screen and this is where it, there's a, a certain amount of tedium and there's a certain reason why people advocate uh, you know using one of those editors uh, the problem is you're going to be spending if you want to play this game all the way through uh, it's about 200 hours uh, estimate and then you've got you can take these same characters and take them into the uh, next game as well uh, wizardry 7 I, I think you might even be able to go to uh, the th uh, wizardry 8 I'm not sure about that one the top of my head but uh, anyway my point is you'll be spending a lot of time <laughs> with these characters so it would behoove you uh, to be very careful you know about what you create and even though you can switch uh, professions later on and stuff there, there's certain things that will be locked in uh, and unfortunately this part of this is random and you don't uh, get to see that random bit until you're pretty far along in the character creation process uh, so basically your options are either just to accept that limited character and ordinarily you would say that's fine uh, i can play with a character with some that's not perfect you know it'll be fine uh, but unfortunately the game is punishing enough and unforgiving enough <laughs> uh, that you might be better off just removing deleting that character and trying again uh, and even the manual says that you should spend a plan to spend a couple hours re-rolling and re-rolling you know to try to get a viable party 
uh, I'm not going to be playing the game all the way through like that. <laughs> At least not uh, for this video. So if, if we don't get perfect characters, we're just going to go with it. Uh, but I'm just putting that out there as the advice. Okay, so let's get our party started. Let's get this party started. Literally. <laughs> uh, okay, got a bunch of races to choose from and... You know, again, you can dig into the manual. Unfortunately, sometimes the manual and even the clue book are wrong about stuff. So you kind of have to have a, a walkthrough and some guides. And, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to know what to trust sometimes. Uh, but, you know, as usual, each race has some perks and some minuses. Uh, and you want to think carefully about the profession you want. You know, some races are better at certain professions than others. And, and some races just frankly aren't very viable. Um, at least according to the uh, sources, but fortunately one of my favorites is here and it's considered viable at least for fighters and priests and I think uh, Valkyries. Good old dwarf. I like to play a dwarf at all times. <laughs> so from my namesake, <laughs> I would have picked the dwarf for me. I, I feel like if I was in some somehow suddenly transplanted into a fantasy game, I'd probably be a dwarf. <laughs> Okay, profession. Um, fighter, you know what those are. Of course, mage, priest, pretty standard stuff. Uh, since my bonus roll was low, so this is this is that random bit I was telling you about. So it's only an eight. Uh, the walkthrough suggests you just keep you just delete this character and keep trying again until you get at least an eighteen on the bonus. Because what happens is this will lock out certain starting professions, but it also just means I'll be at a disadvantage and. It's uh, somewhat difficult to raise some of these uh, points. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> we're just going to go with this, uh, the fighter. And again, there's some debate about whether you even want a fighter in the party, you know, at least at the start. And some people say you definitely need some at the start <laughs> and maybe switch out. Other people have it the other way around. You know, at some point you just have to make your own decisions and, and just play on. Uh, these stats are fairly... Uh, I guess they're not even spelled out for you. Probably recognize like strength, intelligence. The, the pie is piety. The vit, vitality, dexterity, and speed. Personality and karma. And my understanding is the personality is useless. The uh, speed and dexterity control the number of attacks you get. I think dex is number of swings in one attack, and speed is the number of uh, uh, attacks you get per round. I believe I have that right. Uh, vitality hit points and there's something about you get it to, to 15 I think before you start seeing a really uh, big impact on the gameplay uh, one of the things I read was that the strength is a very important stat for everybody because that's controls your carrying capacity and you won't be able to uh, you're going to be getting a lot of quest items eventually you have, you have limited inventory slots and such as that uh, so you don't want to you want to make sure your party's able to carry a lot of stuff so that's a little bit more important than you might assume, even for your non-melee characters. But it's kind of a no-brainer with a front row fighter, so we'll click that for sure. Uh, here's the karma roll. And again, another reason possibly to use an editor to re reload. It's apparently very difficult to raise this stat. Uh, females have an advantage. I guess they have better karma than the males. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> hey, what the hell, D.W. Bradley? <laughs> uh but, oh, that's a good roll for Matt. And Matt you know, I have good karma, folks. Are you surprised? <laughs> I have the golden touch. Well, we'll see when we get into the game. Uh, let's see. Which one looks... You don't have a whole lot of character portraits. You know, there's probably somebody out there that's created the mod that lets you bring in your own portraits. You know, that would not surprise me. Right, so let's take a look at what we got so far. we got Matt. Uh, what is this little symbol there? Let me check that out real quick. Interesting. Let me just show you this. So, like, you see this little star or whatever. You're like, what the heck is that? Well, if we look over at the manual. Let's see. Can I get the manual back up here? Where is the manual? There we go. And uh, so that sun is the age. Adventure begins early for these youngsters. It's symbol the planets moving around. The sun represents the passage of time. Uh, so, yeah, look at this. Eventually their vitality may lessen and they may in general start to show signs of age. So, <laughs> yet another factor. <laughs> I mean, D.W. Bradley went to town on the mechanics. I mean, he had to code in all this stuff, right? 
like an age effect. Uh, rebirth, you lose a point of vitality when you die, even if you're resurrected is what they're saying here. And you really don't want that. So, again, the advice is unless you're just truly hardcore beyond reason, uh, you're going to want to be reloading instead of resurrecting characters. Now, let's see, level, rank, that stuff is pretty uh, obvious. Uh, one of these, uh, one of the things to keep in mind, too, is the, uh, let's see, where's my automat oh, mod? Um, the conditions, like poison, paralyze, you know, such as that, apparently quite common in this game. It's a major annoyance. Uh, so another reason to be thinking about races, because some of them have immunities, or at least resistance uh, to those things. And that could be uh, pretty nice, not to have to constantly be uh, getting rid of an effect. Uh, the choice of skills. Um, so this is kind of like an Elder Scrolls game, something like that, where you have certain skills that will you'll use the skill, like if I have an axe, I'm chopping things, chopping rats, hopefully, with my axe or mace, you know, bashing them with the mace, whatever the case may be. These stat or these uh, skills will automatically raise. So just as I'm using them, they will go up. So the argument is you probably don't want to use your free skill points or your leveling points on that because it'll just go up by itself. You're not, you might be saving yourself a little bit of time, but <laughs> uh, you might be better off spending those points elsewhere. And unfortunately, the fighters don't have a lot of choices that are useful. You know, pretty much the only one that's useful is the, the scouting, because this will let you know if you're standing next to a secret of some sort, like a button on the wall. If you're using a walkthrough, though, that's kind of redundant. But, you know, uh, these other ones aren't very useful either. You know, artifacts, I think that's to use an item. What is artifacts? To use an item, I believe. I just read that it wasn't useful. <laughs> very useful. <laughs> Uh, mythology and scribe all just you know, practically uh, useless. I think mythology might help you to identify whether you're fighting a rat or a giant rat. You know, if you don't have this, it might just say rat, so you wouldn't know. Again, not probably the most useful thing. Uh, I'm just going to go with the scouting, uh, just because I, you know, I kind of like to know where the secrets are, even if I have a walkthrough. You know, just for role playing uh, purposes, I like the idea of my dwarf. You know, he's going down the dungeons, but he's since he's a dwarf, he's like really looking at walls and <laughs> you know, doing all that sort of dwarven stuff. You know, as dwarves are wont to do, you know, uh, he should be a pretty good scout. So I'm okay with that, just for that, uh, the fun of thinking about that aspect. Uh, now, we want to have some women in the party. Uh, you don't want all men, all women. Matter of fact, some of the parties uh, have mostly women, some of the recommendations, because they'll get certain perks. Uh, so let's let's do that. Let's put some. Uh, let's make a. I'm getting these names from patrons, just a random. Uh, so we'll go with Emma here. And again, we're back to this menu, thinking about who would be our next character. And I'm still thinking about that front row. Basically, what will happen? Our first three characters will be in the melee range, uh, but we can get weapons like spears and pole arms for the ones in the, or, or bows, uh, for the ones in the back. And sometimes the characters in the back will get tagged. <clears throat> You know, creeping vines, for example, can just, you know, <laughs> sneak in there and attack the person in the back row. So you're not totally safe, but nevertheless, that's where most of the action will take place. Uh, now, of these choices, um, I saw a lot, some pretty good arguments never to choose a lizard man or a draken, uh, just because they're, they have some pretty, pretty serious limitations and their benefits aren't all that useful, uh, especially later on in the game. The Felpers, a lot of people like those. These are kind of cat-looking people, cat-like people. And the Ray Wolf is supposed to be pretty good as well. Uh, and the Mook, pretty good. Um, but these other ones here, I guess an Elf is pretty pretty good too. Um, and the Fairy has an interesting set of uh, benefits. They're kind of challenging because they're very <laughs> easy to die, at least in my experience. But they regenerate magic pretty easily. And there's also a certain... Uh, items that only certain races can wear or can't wear. So there's quite a bit of uh, detail there. But let's go with the Felper for Emma here. Uh, very strong race uh, as far as Wizardry uh, 6 is concerned. Pretty low score, <laughs> 7. You know, I guess we'll go with it. Uh, the I'm almost tempted to go with Bard here because uh, we definitely want a Bard in the party. 
a very strong, especially early game. Uh, they have a, a loot they can play that put the uh, monsters to sleep. So I think even though I, I planned on <coughs> doing a, uh, you know, a, a front row character, I think I will go with the bar just to make sure I have one of those <laughs> in the party. It's just so critical. Uh, and again, I'm going to raise the strength here, I think. And, you know, we, we for the carrying capacity as well as for the... Uh, uh, doing more melee damage. Okay, let's see about the crime roll. Not not too bad. So this will be our Felper. So we're looking for a cat-like face. Is there a female cat? <laughs> Maybe they male and female cats don't look all that different. Okay, well let's see. Uh, you know neither. I guess this one looks vaguely female. <laughs> yeah, we'll just assume that in the Felper, with Felpers, there's not a big distinction. Uh, now, this is quite interesting choices for the Bard. Uh, again, the music is one that I believe will automatically raise. Oratory, by the way, is any kind of spells except for the Alchemist. That will automatically go up. Some of these other options, though, are really interesting. The... Um, Uh, let's see, Lejardemain I think is stealing. Uh, you can steal from NPCs. I don't normally like to do that in a game. Uh, I don't know if it's essential for Wizardry 6 to be able to steal things. Um, I'm tempted to put a point into it just so we can have it. Uh, Skullduggery though is going to be critical. That is picking locks. I do want to just have a straight up thief in the party though. Because uh, <laughs> there's just so many locks to pick. Uh, so we might just leave that. Uh, ninjutsu I think is... Is, is essential. I'm trying to remember what that was. Uh, ninjutsu. Uh, give me one second. I'll get you the answer. Okay, so look that up. Uh, nin ninjutsu, I guess. Uh, what this does, it lets me hide in combat. And there's an option kind of like the uh, in Bard's Tale where you can hide in the shadows and then pop out and do some extra damage. Or at the very least, avoid some damage. Uh, so they actually recommend that everybody that can have that go ahead and put at least one point into it. Now I'm curious, I don't know if Skullduggery does anything other than picking locks. I guess as long as I have this walkthrough open, we might as well take a gander at it. Skullduggery. As I said, I do want to have a straight up thief to pick the locks, but we'll just see if there's any reason to have this on other characters. Let's see, Skullduggery can train from practice, however it does so rather slowly. It's possible to back up your save game, try to open a door, check for a skill increase, and then restore it. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Now I can divine traps. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to need it since I want to have a, a thief in the party. Uh, so we'll just skip that one. Uh, but we do want to put a point in, in Jutso. And let's skip to the next screen because there is a uh, one I definitely want is Thaumaturgy. So these are the, you know, the Bard can cast some spells and Thaumaturgy is a school of magic. And this will be a good place to put your skill points because it's, I don't know if it never raises by itself, but it's uh, slow if it does. Okay, so I'm just going to make a note here. <laughs> we have a fighter so far. And we have a bar. So we're going to need quite a few more characters. Let's get another uh, character. I think I'll make a... I want to make a Valkyrie. Valkyrie? Valkyrie? Not quite sure how to pronounce it. Let's go... Uh, probably a dwarf would make a good Valkyrie. Oh, I didn't get enough points, though. Okay, that, that stinks. Uh, so let's see. We can make another fighter, a mage, a priest, or a thief. Uh I guess we could go with the... Let's go with the priest, I suppose. We're going to need some priests uh, for their healing ability, obviously. We'll put a few points into strength. Okay. Chroma looks good. And this is a female dwarf. Let's see if we can find a female dwarf here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is that a female dwarf? <laughs> we'll go with this. <laughs> it's a fun fun icon anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, weaponry. Nope. We want to go with uh, theology. Yes. So it's already 
quite a few points in it. Let's just bump that up all the way. And here's where we get to pick some spells, and we're going to want healing, obviously. So heal wounds. And let's see, we get another one. So we have to decide, I guess, what would be a good secondary spell. Let's see, stamina, probably not. Bless and charm. I'm going to go with bless. You know, and uh, unfortunately, it's not clear as you're doing this, but there are certain uh, spells that you can't learn, or you, can, you can't learn from spell books, or you won't be able to find a spell book for them and others that you can, or it's more difficult. Now, so it'd be good to know that so you don't waste your your free spell on something you can easily get. So let's see, we got a fighter, bard, priest. Um, let's see, let's do one more female, Sarah. And let's see, I'm still looking for some some uh, front row folks. Why don't we do a Ray Wolf? Ray Wolf. <laughs> oh, still a lousy, lousy score. Wow. I only get two options. I guess we're going Thief. Uh, again, we'll do the strength. Only one point. Wow. Very limited. This is this is one of those characters you'd probably want to scratch. <laughs> only two karma. Wow, yeah, just every way this could have gone bad, it went bad. Sorry, uh, Sarah. But let's just go with it because we want to, you know, move along. You know, and I'm not sure which of these characters is supposed to be the, the Ray Wolf. In the manual, they look clearly like sort of dog-like people, or wolf-like people. That looks more like a lizard man to me. I guess maybe that is a ray wolf. Okay, and we're going to want to pump up Skullduggar as high as we can. Well, maybe not that high, because we want a point. Actually, let's do this, because we want a couple of points in uh, ninjit Ninjutsu. And we'll keep this. So there's our thief. Okay, let's see about who else we want. Cuba. Now we really, we've only got two more slots and we really need more front row folks. Let's try for another... I wonder if an elf might have some better luck. I don't know if they're necessarily... I don't think about an elf necessarily as being a front row fighter. Though humans are apparently one of the least good choices. I don't want to just have nothing but hobbits. You know, even though the Drakens... Let's go with the Mook. Uh, male. Okay, the only interesting option there is a ranger. I think they're good with uh, bows. So probably not what you'd want in the front row. Um, I guess we're just kind of stuck with this the basic... Wait, I don't have a mage in this party. <laughs> uh, this will be interesting. Um, you know, maybe we should make a mage and just... Oh, let's see. I don't know about putting... I don't know if a mage necessarily needs a, a high strength score. Let's see, this is our mook. I think we're going to need a mage, though. Okay, let's see. I'm kind of getting a little mixed up. Whoa, whoa, stop. <laughs> yeah, this will be essential, though. And I think for... I think we're going to want armor shield. And sleep. Yes. Okay, we got one more crack. <laughs> uh, let's hope we can get a good front row fighter. Let's go with another Felper, I suppose. Male. Uh, well, still, I never got any options like Samurai, uh, Bishop, any of those. We're, we're just kind of with these <laughs> really basic options. Uh, not good. Uh, I guess we'll go with the Ranger, you know, just to have a little bit of variety. Only one bonus point. Wow. So you can definitely see how you would want to delete some of these characters, keep creating, you know, see if you can get a little bit better <laughs> results. Because <laughs> this is going to be a real challenge. We're going to see a lot of death. Okay, this is our ranger. 
we won't do the skullduggery, but I want a couple of points in, or at least one point in ninjutsu, and he gets alchemy. And so that might be useful. Let's do a couple of points in that. Uh, save. And let's get a look at this party. You know, we might want to play around a little bit. Let's see if we can get a little bit more of a, a stronger front row. So let's see. We've got mage. I don't know if a priest would be a good choice for that front row. They'd probably get banged up pretty hard. Usually a priest has a little bit better. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like a bard or a priest, who gets the better, who would be better to have in that third slot? Let's try this. You know, part of it's just trial and error too, folks. You know, you, you, <laughs> you put a, a party together and you just see what happens. And don't forget too, we could always, later in the game, uh, switch professions and yeah, maybe get a few points of Thief and then switch over to something else that's a little more uh, better for the mid-game. Okay, so we got a Matt the Fighter, Remy the Ranger, Becky the Priest, Emma the Bard, Sarah the Thief, and Cuba uh, the Mage. So we're kind of a little bit light on uh, magic, but we got healing, we got lock picking, we got a Bard for the loot. So right, we're going to go with this. <laughs> now, unfortunately, there's no way to save the game, I don't think, at this point. And it is possible to wipe, literally, when you just start the game. Um, so we'll hope, hopefully that won't happen, but we'll see. All right, let's go. You ready to go through these doors? I mean, what's going on with this fountain over here? <laughs> like a cat uh, the, spitting into a bowl and then into the urn. I don't know. Reminds me a little bit of Shadowgate. Uh, it is, you know, somebody that had been playing nothing but wizardry all this time. You know, in the wizardry community, it was pretty hardcore. Uh, you know, pretty good fan base, very loyal. Uh, so they would have been, I think, really impressed with this, really excited to finally see some, you know, updated graphics. Might not, might not look that impressive to us today, but, you know, it's clearly, if you go back and look at Wizardry 5 even, this is quite a step up. Oh, yeah, this little bit. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite things to complain about these early games, the copy protection. <clears throat> so the idea was, you know, these discs weren't very reliable, so people really didn't like the idea of not being able to copy a disc and have and just play off their backups. Uh, so what they, what they would do, they'd say, okay, that's fine, you can do that, but we'll just put one of these password checks or something so that you have to have the manual in order to be able to, uh, to play the game. And I'm pretty sure this one on GOG is uh, is cracked already. Uh, so if you had a pirated version, you could probably just skip this. <laughs> so it only kind of affected the people that bought legitimate copies that have to look at this. But I just wanted to mention this and show it to you quickly because it's, it's a good example of the, uh, you know, the time. So they put it on this red background and the black text to try to make it difficult to photocopy. Um, because otherwise you could just make a photocopy and just hand that along, mail that along with the pirated copy you're doing. I mean, you make a backup copy, you photocopy that, and you send it to your buddies, and suddenly everybody has a, a $60 game for free, or for the price of some blank discs, basically. And, you know, 60 bucks, it cost $60 back then, maybe even 70 You know, you do adjust that for inflation, and my goodness, you're really talking about some, uh, you know, basically over 100 bucks for this game. You probably would be tempted to pirate it. <laughs> Maybe you try, try to call your friend and be like, yeah, there's a symbol. There's like a thing symbol and a butterfly looking thing and a ukulele looking thing. I don't, it's kind of hard even to describe it. Okay, I think I got this one figured out. Looks like it's a, let's see if I can zoom it in so you can see it a little bit. Energy blast. Yeah, it doesn't look, I think that's the cure paralysis if you can see that on the bottom of the screen, so. Let's try it. I don't know if they used that system throughout the game. I remember the Pool of Radiance had that annoying code wheel. <laughs> but they did use that code wheel at a few points to try to make it a little bit more than just a blatant copy protection mechanism. See, approaching the gate with confidence, you know if things get too hairy, you can always turn and run back out. Alright, so it, all this is spelled out in the manual for you. There's some 
you know, this game takes into account previous history in the Wizardry world, but uh, really all we need to know at this point is this castle was thought long abandoned, used to be some power, powerful king, queen, a lot of magical stuff going on, <laughs> but we're not really sure what's happening here now. Uh, so our job is to explore this and, you know, basically figure that out, and we'll learn a lot more of the story as, as we go along. I guess it's kind of like Ultima Underworld <laughs> in some senses. I mean, just imagine that. Ultima Underworld is just a few years away uh, from this. But it's that same idea, right? We're going into this mysterious place. We think we can easily back out, but of course, that's not going to happen. <laughs> hmm. And you can tell uh, D.W. Bradley really is a... He probably is an excellent dungeon master. If, I don't, I'm pretty he, surely he's a dungeon master or game master, whatever you want to call it, because uh, his descriptions are really good, very poetic, uh, very much like a really good you know DM would come up with stuff like this. You know, sometimes it's a little bit wordy, a little bit flowery, I guess, but that's all part of the, the charm of it, really. And so you are in the entrance chamber of the castle. It appears to be empty, and a heavy coat of dust covers the floor. Small scampering noises. I wonder what those could be. Echo down far distant corridors. A reminder that it is you who are the intruder here. Okay, I kid you not. Last time I played this, right at this point, I got attacked and I got wiped. Or at least I lost two or three characters. Because I hadn't even been given a chance to equip my items. Now it's not quite as bad. As, you know, in Bard's Tale you start off naked and you have to make that beeline to Garth's uh, shop. To gear up <laughs> before you get randomly encountered uh, and you know, of course you could die many times trying to do that it's not quite that bad we have some gear that we come in here with but for our convenience i guess uh, it's not equipped so we're just carrying all this stuff for no apparent reason you think you would have put it on already but uh, okay <laughs> let's go ahead and gear up um let me mute this thing before it starts going crazy uh, okay Armor class here, across the top, 9, negative 1. Like a AD and d game, you want that to be low. It's negative 1 because I have a shield on. This could also get to be positive, though, if, I have, if I'm carrying a lot of weight. So again, you, you want to have some strength because uh, otherwise you get encumbered and lose some AC. And you're fairly limited in how much you can carry. Uh, there is what they call a swag bag where you can put some things, but uh, I guess you still have the weight. Uh, let's see, anything else to say there? We can also do what they call assay an item. So if we look, for example, at this leather queer ass, <laughs> I kid you, just, apparently that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> Sounds, I almost feel dirty saying it, but uh, that's how it's pronounced. Uh, body armor, this first row is the folks who can use it. So this is races, humans, elf, dwarf, gnome. Uh, what is, why is there another H? <laughs> uh, H, Hobbit, I guess, Felper, uh, Lizard Man, Draken, you know, etc. It looks like anybody can wear this leather uh, queer ass except for a fairy. Uh, but then you are also limited by professions, which is this next line. So fighters are okay, mages can't, priests can't, thieves can, you know, and on down the row. Uh, so you can see our AC there is negative five, or this. Uh, what leather queer ass takes five off of your body AC, and that's what this row is. So each different body part will have its own AC. So you kind of have your overall AC, but then you'll get in here and like the, I think this is magical, you know, helmets, looks kind of like suspenders, I guess is your chest piece and pants and gloves and, and shoes or boots. Uh, okay. So it's, it would, be, would have been so much, I really, you know, they could remake this game and, and just improve it in so many ways just by fixing little things that, you know, basically D.W. Bradley had to come up with a way to represent this information back in 1990 without a whole lot of guides. It wasn't like there was a bunch of stuff he could just copy. He had to just create his own system. Uh, so that's what you see there. Let's see what else we want to do. Uh, we want to look at the other characters. Remy next. Just to get Remy geared up. He's got a bow. So he might not, we not, might not want to put him on the front row. I don't know how well a bow is going to work uh, on the front row. We'll just, might actually want to move him to the back. Uh, we, we could see what the, 
armor class looks like. Now uh, this character's got some uh, Becky, uh, ha a priest. I guess she comes with some uh, some light heal potions. So I think we'll trade some of those to, you know, give some of the. Uh, whoops, did that work? I want to give some of the these potions to some of the other characters so they can have them. Let's see, trade with. Uh, I guess maybe you know I'm kind of wondering if the thief might actually be pretty good for the front row. <laughs> You might experiment a little bit with that. Okay, and she can keep uh, one of them. Okay, let's move on to Emma. Emma has a sling, and there is a store we can, or there's a guy we could trade with downstairs. It's kind of a pain. It's probably the most cumbersome part of the game. It's the trading screen. It's it's really cumbersome, clunky. It really needs better, a better interface, but it is what it is. Uh, but we'll have to at some point go down and get some more bullets get her a weapon that she can use that doesn't use ammo. Uh, there's that all-important loot. And let's see, Sarah has a cutlass and a dirk. Yeah, so I think we'll move her to the front because she's got, you know, these two stabby weapons. Make more sense to have her closer to the front. And then we've got Cuba, our mage, and we definitely don't want him anywhere near the front line. And he's got a magic missile scroll. We can cast that at some point. Okay, let's reorder the party. Let's put Matt at the front. Let's have uh, Sarah next. And let's see. What did Emma... Emma's got a, uh, a sling. I guess we'll put Becky next. And then we'll have... I'm kind of thinking maybe put Remy at the very back. So let's put Cuba there. So uh, it's, it's a tough call. Again, we can always change this up later. So we've got our bar in the back. And we've got Remy there in the back. Cuba, Becky in the middle, and Matt and Sarah. So that's probably about as optimal as we're going to get with this. So let's go ahead and save this here. Save game and resume. All right, so our first order of business then is just to level up. We need to get to at least level three before we really get serious about exploring, uh, going into locked rooms and stuff. And there's no, there's not so many random encounters that's necessarily easy. <laughs> it can just take some time. <clears throat> Actually, it can take quite a while and to get to level three, you know, a couple hours, uh, basically. Uh, so I'm not going to do that all that here what I'll do I'll, I'll fight a few fights hopefully get into it with a certain creature I really like to fight with and then I'll pause and then level these characters up to about level three and then come back and, and finish the video uh, so you can see some of the less uh, repetitive stuff uh, but right off the bat we get some pretty fun uh, items and a puzzle so neatly inscribed upon the metal face of the chest are these words open me first so this puzzle is not too hard to figure out. We've got two chests, <laughs> one that says open me first, one that says open me second. Huh, let's see, should I open this one first? Yes. Actually, if you do it in the wrong order, you get, I don't know if it kills you, but you get worse items. So here's the open chest screen, and you can see there's a, some questions, just like the old wizardry games. It could be trapped, so we can inspect it. Let's have our thief look at it. Sarah. No trap found. Uh, there's also a spell we could use on it, but we should be good just to open it. Let's have Sarah open it. The <laughs> chest was not trapped. Inside the chest are several items in a scroll which reads a cure but twice in a cure but twice in healing thrice. One life for thee times seven. Okay, so we got a, some potions and a amulet of life. Now this amulet of life, the cure light wounds is worth its weight in gold. And we also have a cure poison, that's very useful. And again, you can see how already these characters' inventories are getting full. Now this amulet of life is what you can use to resurrect characters, but again, since there's such a nasty penalty associated with that, we're just gonna sell it and <laughs> get some gear with it. <laughs> You don't want to be losing vitality points. All right, open me second. Let's 
get this chest open. I'll go ahead and inspect it. I know it's not trapped, but still. It's good to, you don't want to get in the habit of just opening up stuff without inspecting. So get some coins, a sword, and a scroll, which reads, Beware the narrow corridors of the mind. You found one sword of striking. Uh, sword of striking, that always sounds good. Let's go ahead and equip that. We can, I think we can assay it. Let's see. So you can see who can use it. Doesn't really tell me though what it does, does it? Does it swing thrust? I know it makes it easier to hit enemies, <laughs> which is a, a really nice thing at this point. Let's see, get that shield. We don't want to equip that. Where's leggings, sandals? So one thing we might do is give the long sword to somebody. Let's see, uh, who could use it? Priest can't use it. Bard can't use it. What else do we have in this party? Ranger? Yeah, even the ranger can't use it. Wow. So that ranger's not really impressing me. <laughs> they can't even use a longsword. <laughs> so we we're going to have to find a lot of arrows. Okay. But not doing too bad. Uh, so really from here we could just keep exploring this you could make you could go downstairs if you know where the the vendor is but I want to get it just into a oh here's a nice fountain uh, this particular fountain here will raise stamina which is this yellow bar here so there's certain actions in combat that will make that start to go down you'll either have to rest to come to the fountain to uh, to raise that up shouldn't need it immediately and like I say, you want to be careful. Some of these doors are not locked. But you don't even want to... Oh, there we go! <laughs> that didn't take long. Oh, perfect. Uh, okay, so we, we, we found a rat. And, you know, this is my favorite critter to kill for obvious reasons. But I just wanted to say, I really like the way Wizardry 6 portrays these little guys. Because if you look at that animation, it's really quick. And uh, it looks almost like it's skipping some frames of animation, which it probably is. But the, the nice thing about this is, uh, in real life, uh, when you see rats and mice, one of the reasons why they scare you, and they do, you know, you see the old movies and the you know, person will jump up on the chair, jump up on the table screaming. Uh, and you think, that's funny, you know, such a little creature, come on, why, what are you scared of? But it's their super or preter preternatural speed that's what makes them unnerving i mean you see this creature that's just zipping like way faster than any insect <laughs> i mean they just move at such an incredible pace it just seems almost magical it really freaks you out at least that's uh, my experience you don't expect something to move that fast <laughs> it really is it start startles you uh so i think this animation captures it well now this could be a giant rat for all i know it might not just be a regular rat uh, we don't have a lot of mythology so uh, they say that if there's only one of a thing, it's probably the more advanced version. So we might be dealing with a giant rat here. Okay, well, let's get into it then. We'll fight. Uh, we have some options, swing or thrust. And I think the swing is more likely to hit and the thrust does more damage. So we're going to go with the, with the thrust. Since he's got the sort of striking, it should balance out the, uh, the penalty. Let's see, fight, parry. Uh, Sarah could try to hide and then do that surprise attack. Why don't we try that just for, just for fun? I think that will also level up her uh, is it ninjutsu. ninjutsu? Uh, Becky here can fight, cast a spell. Let's just fight. Uh, Bash, I think, does more damage here. <coughs> Cuba. That's her mage. Uh, we could try casting a spell, but you know, those, those points are kind of hard to come by. Let's just see what we got. Could do an armor shield or put it to sleep. You know, I've been trying forever to figure out, like, how long does armor shield last? It does not say in the manual anywhere. I don't know if it just lasts for one combat or what. Uh, but here we can decide how strong we want to cast the spell. We don't have any points to deal with. You've only got three points to start with, and it costs two. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a fun system. 
So you got these six different schools of magic, and each one, you've got certain points that you can um, get each day, I guess, or each time you rest. Uh, it regenerates very slowly, though. But it's kind of neat that you can get, you can cast so many earth spells, so many of, uh, you know, whatever this is, uh, before running out. It's not, it looks kind of like a slot system at first, but it's, it's a little different than that. Okay, let's cast that armor on to probably Becky. It probably has the lowest, uh, or the highest armor, I guess. Okay, Remy is our ranger. Let's go ahead and just fight. And then our bard can... Uh, you know, I guess I could try putting this rat to sleep, but surely we can take care of just one rat. <laughs> I noticed she also had a hide option. We could have tried that. But let's just go with this. Start fighting. Rat. Missed. 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 She did hide. Uh, okay, missed. And so you see what happens, especially with the, when we've got these new characters, they're going to be missing almost every time. And it, it's not related to dexterity, like you might think, or intelligence. It's just a matter of, of, the, of their level. And as they get more and more leveled up, that will go down. Or they'll get to, you know, they'll, they'll be hitting more often. And certain classes, and I don't know about races, but, you know, it gets kind of complicated. There's some ways that it goes uh, down faster with leveling for some people. Uh, but all in all, it's, it's kind of complicated. Basically, just level up. <laughs> you know, some people get so complicated with it. Like, you can... Um, like, one of the things you can do with that switching the professions around is if, if you're careful with that, you can find some ways to get your uh, uh, to-hit bonus even lower. But it's a little too complicated for yours truly. Let's see. You want to do another spell? And let's see, we put armor shield on Becky. I guess can't cast any more of those. Uh, we, I'm just going to save the sleep because I know we're going to need it later on. So let's just leave it there. You know, and it's like the he's only got, or he's got a quarter staff, but I guess he's still too far back to hit with that. We might want to look to see if we can get him, a, you know, something with a longer reach. Uh, dodge and guard. Uh, the dodge is pretty obvious what that does. Uh, the guard, though, if he gets attacked, he'll get a counterattack, I believe is the theory there. So I guess we could try that. Let's see, Remy can fight since he's got that bow. We could try to hide with him, but let's just fight again. I'm afraid they're going to run out of ammo really quick. Let's see, bullets don't hit, four damage, boom! Emma, good job. There's our first kill, <laughs> and it was a rat. Don't you love it? Uh, okay, if we look at our stats now, you can see we've got 25 XP on everybody, and I think we need about a thousand. The different professions have different leveling requirements. <laughs> As you can see, it's going to be a while uh, before we hit that second level, and we have to get to at least level three before we're going to be we're going to have any hope of. Uh, surviving those those battles inside the rooms. Let's see, CC carry capacity already at uh, 35, so you can see how quickly that, that's going to get unmanageable. So you see why I raised those uh, the strength scores on everybody. Of course, you want to save after every battle, <laughs> because, you know, the next battle could be with, like, four groups of rats and rogues, and there's, a, there's certain battles that are almost guaranteed to kill you. So let's just explore a little bit more. Let's try to see if we can get into one more good battle. And then I'll just hop over and, uh, you know, actually what we might do. Let's go down and see if we can get some better, some better gear. I'm just kind of hoping I could get into a little battle here. So you hear some kind of rustle or flap from somewhere nearby. Perhaps it is only the wind descending from one of the towers. Yeah, so these are, you know, the towers that go up on the corners of the castle. Probably don't want to do that yet. I want to stick to these uh, first floors in the basement. Okay, more towers. You almost wish there were more... Keep the gate closed. You almost wish that there were more random encounters, so this would be a little faster, but we need to explore anyway. And this is, you're really starting to see the value of this add-on. Because it's doing all the mapping for me. 
Okay, there's some stairs up. Another door. It helps if you don't keep banging into the walls. <laughs> now there's some stairs up, but I don't really want to go up yet. I want to go down. So yeah, not running into any any monsters yet, except for that one delicious rat. Okay, this is the second floor. I mean, this is the basement level. And there's a couple of fountains here. This one... I'm pretty sure just poisons you. Let me see what this other one does. Apparently the other one does nothing. So one poisons you, one does nothing. So a little bit of a spoiler there, but I don't know how enjoyable it would be to get poisoned, so I'm just telling you. <clears throat> okay, let's see. There is a guy we can barter with down here. Trying to see where I'm at. I'm starting to question my sanity. I know there's a, <laughs> a place to barter here somewhere. I did go down, did I not? Let's see, where is the, Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, that. I think it is. I think it's this door. Yeah, a barracks full of broken cots turn to rot is all you find here. Wait, you heard a noise. And it is. A silent, mysterious, dark man appears from out of the shadows. May I interest you in a bargain? <laughs> like a Walmart greeter. Queequeg. And he's who we can sell stuff to. So let's go ahead and sell that. We can sell our uh, amulet of life. 11,000 gold. So that's pretty good money for an item that we don't want to use ever. Because remember, again, uh, that will take a point of vitality off every time we have to use it. So let's just get rid of it. And then we can buy some stuff. Uh, the mystery oil apparently is used in some kind of a puzzle later on as a quest item. I don't know that we necessarily want to buy it at this point. You can get some uh, uh, some potions. That is a scroll. Some weapons. These weapons probably aren't going to be better than what we have already. There might be a few upgrades like the War Scepter, Morning Star, Hammer. But we want to think about maybe upgrading our armor. Chamois skirt, a hat. Buskins, uh, quilt tunic. You know, one of the bad things about this, unfortunately, is it doesn't give you any of the stats here. Uh, let's just check quick to see if any of this is in the manual. Let's see, feathered hat. So it's not in the manual. What about the clue book? Yes, it is in the clue book. So it says, here, I'll flip it over so you can see. Uh, feathered hat, armor helm. Gives you two bonus to your uh, AC. So it's better than having no hat, which I think we have, or no helmet. <laughs> uh, but not so awesome. However, I'm pretty sure probably everybody should be able to wear that, right? So you can see how complicated or how, you know, you, you don't have to look at this, look back here, think about what your characters have already. It's, it's not a very convenient interface to be working with. Uh, let's see, what might we want to buy? I'm thinking we probably do want to get the at least the boots. Uh, I'm not sure if this quilt tunic would be an upgrade for anybody. Now one of the things about this, another annoyance about this interface is he's going to change his inventory every time we talk to him. So one of the things that's highly recommended in all of the guides is you do that a few times until you can get some, uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, stink bombs and basically grenades and things you can throw for deal with some of the bigger groups, level out the uh, strength of some of the parties. And like he doesn't even have, I, don't, I didn't even see arrows for sale, so you'd have to 
leave, come back a few times until you got the, the right stuff. You see the skirt. He can't use the skirt because he's male. Uh, feathered hat he can wear. Let's just go ahead and get the hat. Let's get the boots. And I believe the E there means extended range. So we might want to look at some of our other... Yeah, let's look at some of the other people here and see if they might be able to use that. Uh, so we had to exit out. <laughs> and yes, it's fairly annoying, but we can deal with it. Let's see, pull the money. Let's go to... Let's see about some of the characters that... Yeah, let's go to Emma. And see if he's got anything that she can use that would be an improvement. Because right now she's just got that... Sling. Okay... So all of this stuff is unusable. She could use a quarter staff. It says a quarter staff has extended range on it. Okay, so as far as I can figure out, let's just Cuba. I, I'm pretty sure has a quarter staff. I want to verify that before we do make any big purchases here. Uh, we can get a chamois skirt, which I think is an upgrade over a robe. Let's at least get that. I want to check Cuba. And see what he's got. Let's see, Cuba. Uh, let's see, trade... Cuba. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's see. Trade. So he's got robes on. And a staff. So is the... Is that the same thing as a quarter staff, I wonder? Hmm, is a staff and a quarter staff the same thing? I'm going to check the clue book first to see if we can figure this out. Uh, let's see, quarter staff is extended range, and a regular staff is short. Okay, well, that explains that. So if we get this guy a full staff, he should be able to use it. So I think that would be a worthwhile investment. And he can't use anything else, I don't believe. Okay, so that's good. Got a little something. I like to get a little something for everybody. You know, let's look at our, our thief now. Uh, let's see. Uh, thief, 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 thief. Pull the money, pull the money against Sarah. Trade Sarah. So right now she's got cloth and she does have shoes. And she's got a dirk and a cutlass. Let's see if anything here would be an upgrade for her. And she's already got this. And she can't use a quilt. So I guess she's pretty much maxed out. Let's see, Becky's turn. Becky, 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 what you got on? Becky has, she's got a quarter staff, robes, sandals. Okay, let's see, is there anything that might be an upgrade? I should get a scepter, but these are short range. Let's see, I already got that. She can wear a quilt tunic. That's probably a pretty good investment there. Let's get that for Becky. Okay, and we got to remember too, we got to sell the items that were taken off. I guess we could... Oh, I'll hold on to them for the, uh, for the moment. Okay, and then we've got Remy there. I'm really curious about him, actually. 
Let's see, trade Remy. So he's got the short bow, some arrows, a suede doublet, pants, and some shoes. I want to give him the, I think, you know, for some reason, a ranger with a feathered hat <laughs> seems so appropriate. Okay, let's see. He can cast that stuff. I could give him a bearded war axe, but that's got a short range. You know, if we wanted to move him to the front, we'd want to give him a weapon like that. He can use it. He can also use a spear. And that's got an extended range on it. That might be a pretty good weapon for him, actually. We can get him a longbow. That's really pricey. That's probably a really good item. You know, I want him to keep using his bow, but I'm just concerned that he's going to run out of arrows. But let's go ahead and get him this better bow. And maybe get him the... Well, we'll just leave it at this. I, I really want to make sure we get some extra arrows. <laughs> I don't know what happens if he runs out of arrows. That sounds serious. Okay, so the only character left here then is Emma. Let's go ahead and see what we can get for her. Our cat lady, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Let's see, trade Emma sell. So she's dealing. She's only got 23 bullets left, and she's wearing cloth. We did get her that skirt already. Okay, let's see if there's maybe something we can buy for her. All of this is unusable. Yeah, I don't see. We'll have to come back, I guess, because none of these weapons are going to work. I mean, granted, she's going to be using her loot mostly anyway. It's not, not that big of a deal, but... Okay, we don't want to steal. We want to leave. <laughs> be very careful not to hit fight. <laughs> oh, my God, we're fighting. Oh, I didn't even get to put on my new stuff. Two bushwhackers, you know. <laughs> this could be... We could die here, and I would lose all that time I just spent, you know, buying that stuff. I mean, it's almost enough... Does Dust Box have like a, uh, what do you call it, a, a save state type option? Let me look into that. Okay, so I just looked it up and it said if I hit Alt F5 in Dust Box, that should save the state. I didn't see it say anything, though. Let me try it again. Alt F5. <laughs> it doesn't say anything. <laughs> but apparently, I can hit F off at Alt F9 to bring it back. So we'll just do that just as a security measure. Probably be okay here. But I would hate to have to redo all that. Alright, we can I guess we'll just fight. I won't try to change gear immediately. Let's have Sarah hide again. Becky will fight. Yes, <laughs> bash those bushwhackers. Come on, Becky. Cuba. You know, I am going to try to equip with him, because I want him to have at least something to do besides parry. Uh, Remy, go ahead and shoot an arrow. And Emma, let's use your loot. So this will hopefully put some of these guys to sleep. I don't think it lasts but for one round, but if it works, it'll help a little bit. Okay, let's try this. Remy shoots and misses. Emma plays her loot. Bushwhacker, they both fall asleep. Great, excellent work. <laughs> uh, now we can equip uh, this quarterstaff. That's good. Robes, robes, sandals. Good, okay. Hit, body, no penetration. Wow. These are definitely going to be challenging. You notice that used up a little bit of stamina just equipping items. <laughs> All right. Fight. We tried to swing this time. Sarah should be. You know, she's been in the shadows, so she should just come out and poof, try for the thrust. Becky, let's fight again. Uh, what? Yeah, I think the bash probably still the way to go. Cuba, does he have any spells? I guess he's got armor, shield, and sleep. I think those will be all that useful for now. Let's, do, uh, yeah, let's just have him uh, attack. Yeah, so now he's got his quarterstaff. He's got the, the reach. He can 
hit him with that. Let's try to bash. Now we got everybody contributing to the fight. <laughs> Good. You know, Remy, I, I don't want to hide. He's got a bow. He should be okay. Uh, do we want to use the loot again? Ah, let's just fight. Okay, start fighting. Remy shoots, misses. Sarah, surprise, cutlass attacks. Whoa, 14 points of damage. Excellent. Yeah, they're not even, they're hitting, but they're not even penetrating. These are some pretty serious enemies. My guess is once they start landing blows, we're going to go down quick. So we don't want to spend a lot of time uh, on this fight if we can help it. Let's see. Sarah, she doesn't have a hide option anymore. Maybe you can only do that once per battle. Go ahead and fight. Thrust. Becky, fight. Thrust. Got to try to penetrate, so maybe thrusting is the way to go. Uh, Cuba. You know, we could try a spell. What do we got here? Armor and sleep. Let's try the armor, because, uh, you know, once these things start fighting, it's going to get nasty. Let's put it on Becky. Uh, I need to check to see if there's a way I can verify if the spell is still running or not. Remy's a ranger. Surely the guy can hit. <laughs> I guess I'll go ahead and hide him. Hide both of these folks. Remy hides. Failed. Hides in the shadows. Sarah misses. Bushwhacker hits. No penetration. Fizzled. The spell. Six points of damage. Oh. Vicious fight. Okay, let's make sure everybody's thrusting. Thrusting. Uh, Remy fight. Emma fight. Oh, I'm getting very lucky. Everybody, they're missing. They're missing me. I'm missing them, but they're also missing me. <laughs> Whoa! Emma got him with a in the foot with a rock and killed him. Apparently, excellent work. Excellent. <laughs> okay, uh, save it. Uh, let's see. Save. Press return. Yeah, we want. Let's put our gear on while I'm thinking about it. Let's see, Matt, Sword of Striking, Buckler Shield, the Feathered Hat, Cuirass, the Leggings, the Buskins. Let's see, is there anybody that can use his longsword? You know, it really sucks our ranger can't even use that longsword. I don't know if a thief can use it. Let's check this longsword. Can the... No, the thief can't use it either, so we might as well sell it, I guess. I'm uh, pretty sure everybody at least has sandals on. Okay, let's look at the next person. And we got a cutlass, a dirk, cloth, shirt, pants, buskins. Um, Becky's got a... This will be a pretty good upgrade for her. And a quarterstaff, quilt tunic. Instead of those robes, sandals, and let's see who is next. I'm pretty sure robes are like the worst, the worst stuff. Okay, he's good to go. Remy has, let's see, a longbow. Yeah, this will be that'll probably make a big difference. <clears throat> suede doublet, suede pants, buskins. You know, somebody else might be able to use that short bow. Let's see. Yeah, so most people can use it, except for priests and uh, that's probably bishops. So we could give that to somebody else. Why don't we trade that bow to our to Emma, maybe? Not gold. There we go. That'll give her a backup item, a backup weapon. Okay, it's probably better than that bullets than the sling, but I don't have any bullets. Or uh, arrows for her yet. Shammy skirt. Okay. And then we should be able to... Let's take a quick look at these pants. <laughs> Mages can't wear pants. And priests can't wear pants. And probably everybody else has something better than that. <clears throat> okay, let's go back out. We'll go back in. We'll sell all these items we don't want. And we can check to see if he's got some additional stuff we might want. 
Let's see. Yes, you may definitely interest me in some items. So let's see. He can sell his sandals. 11 gold. Sell the longsword. Okay, there's two items. Let's go ahead and see if he's got anything. Yeah, so now he's got stink bombs. Those are very useful. He's got some scrolls that he didn't have before. A main gosh. Longsword, staff, sling. See, there's the arrows. And they're quite ex 300 gold for arrows. <laughs> A light crossbow, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if our bard could use that. Uh, very interesting. Uh, got these some more suede items, a skull cap, buskins, <laughs> leather queer ass. You know, I'm not necessarily going to make you sit here and watch me do this all the shopping. Uh, let me just, uh, I'll pause it here and get these guys kitted out the best we can, then we'll come back and get into some more combat. All right, well, that took a lot longer than I ever would have thought. I think I spent about two hours going back and forth to, with the Queek Wig here, buying, checking out the inventory, equipping, selling. I mean, I'm a, I feel like a merchant at this point, but we got pretty good upgrades. Leather, helm, halberd, leggings on. Even found some gauntlets and boots on Matt here. We've got some pretty good gear all across the board. <clears throat> There's a couple little things I would like to improve on, but uh, you know I'm not just going to sit sit here for days, <laughs> hoping for better stuff. I actually moved up Emma here to third spot because she's got a little bit better AC than our priest does. I guess the priests in wizardry are <clears throat> practically mages in terms of what armor they can wear. Not real happy with the ranger. You know, he's got some... <clears throat> I feel like a ranger should at least be able to wear leather. You know, these other characters they are what they are. We just have to hope they don't get hit. Uh, but overall, I'm feeling pretty good about this group. So now it's time to go out, get into some fights, and hopefully level up to level 3. Uh, so we'll just wander around and see what... You know, explore the rest of the map here. We'll get into a couple of fights, and then, I'll, again, I'll pause it, <clears throat> the recording, so you don't sit there and watch me do, like, you know, 50 random encounters. <laughs> All right, one rogue. <clears throat> Should be able to take him out pretty easily. Uh, we could try to thrust. You know, it's a little harder to execute that move, but it does more damage. So I think everybody can fight at this point. We either have a quarterstaff or a ranged weapon. So we should be good. Let's see, four damage, boom! <laughs> Just that easy. <laughs> Amazing what difference some good gear makes. All right, so let's see. One down. <clears throat> Hoping to get into some more fights with my little furry friends. Let's just explore, explore. You know what, I should probably save that, even though it was a simple little fight. I don't want to have to do it again. And by the way, the save states on DOSBox do not work. Apparently you need some kind of add-on or a different version of Xbox or a, <laughs> Xbox? A different version of DOSBox than what I have to make that work. Okay, well we're not getting anywhere here. Let's go back up top. <clears throat> I'm not sure if there's any method to the madness here in terms of what how strong the random encounters are there we go there we go one rat <laughs> getting really lucky i mean i've played this so many times and a lot of the times just even at this stage you run into these huge packs like multiple groups and it's you know way more than your group can handle this time we're actually moving at a pretty nice clip i think it's quite fun i like these little small battles there's another one I mean, it's definitely satisfying. <laughs> They're giving me plenty of rats. I almost would, wouldn't mind taking on a, a, slart, a slightly larger group just so we could try out some of our crowd control. Yeah, that's all working good. Yep, didn't take him out in one, in one attack, one round. Boom, Matt got him with a sword striking. 25 XP, 10 gold. You don't get enough. Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Three rogues. All right, so this might be a little bit tougher of a fight. Let's see. 
when they're swinging. Uh, let's see, Emma, our rogue. Let's go ahead and have her use her loot. See if we can put some of these guys to sleep. Let's see, Remy, 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 a ranger. Go ahead and just, well, you know, we'll do the hide option. Level up his uh, skill that way a little bit. Becky here, we just want her to fight. Bash that quarterstaff. <clears throat> Cuba. Let's see. Why don't we try a this armor shield spell again? Go ahead and cast that. Probably want to cast that on Emma. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Plays the loot. You now I got into a fight with some fuming ivies. <clears throat> And they just put everybody to sleep. <laughs> I just had to sit there and click for hours. <laughs> well, maybe not hours, but, you know. Like, nobody could do anything. Everybody was asleep, and all those things would do is put everybody to sleep every time. That was a fun fight. Not. Okay, let's just use our defaults. Thrust. Emma dies. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, that's no good. I wasn't expecting uh, that. So we just need to run away. Oops. And reload. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. This is a uh, you know part of it. You gotta make sure you don't save and quit. It can be a little bit tricky. Have to get back in there and try it again. <clears throat> Hope we don't run into that. I mean, at this level, all it takes is a couple of bad rolls, basically. You're dead. You know, I guess what we can do is we're just kind of messing around here. There's a there's a fountain that will give us our, our stamina back, so you don't have to keep resting. That's pretty cool. As far as I know, it's infinite, infinite number of uses. Da da da. Now you see a little button there. My tr my scouting skill was useful enough before to where that it's it said, "Hey, there's something here." I don't know if it rolls every time I go past there or what. Oops. Go ahead and save the game and resume. Yeah, well now we can poke around in here. Pieces of old bone litter the ground in deep red stains color the earth. Never a good sign. La la la. I don't think we'll be able to get through that gate without a key. But, you know, at least we're filling in the map. <clears throat> come on, come on. It's like feast or famine with these random encounters. There we go. Time for a little... Ooh, a rogue leader. A rogue leader. One rogue leader. This might actually be a tough fight. I don't know. You know, just to be on the safe side, why don't we try our... Use our loot again. Okay, let's see. Remy... Go ahead and hide as well. Becky will fight. Bash. <clears throat> Cuba, just fight. Ooh, well, yeah, sure, Bash. <laughs> Throws a dirk, hit, no penetration. Plays the loot, he's unaffected. Remy does hide. Miss, 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 miss. Yep, definitely going to be a tough fight. Uh, let's see, Rogue Leader has 15 hit points. Okay, uh, fight, try to swing. Sarah, try to hide. Uh, Emma, go ahead and try the loot again. At least I could get one hit on him if I could send him to sleep. He'd probably wake up when he got thwacked, but at least I'd have that one hit. Let's see, fight. Do the thrust, I guess. Let's see, Cuba. I don't think I've got any spells that's going to be useful. We could try the armor spell again. Put that on Emma. <laughs> Maybe he can get it on there before she dies. <laughs> Let's see, Rima, Remy shoots, hits. Oh, Matt died. Jesus. Oh, man. Okay. Not going so well. Yeah. At least
They said it was challenging, folks. They weren't kidding around with that. That's why I just save, 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 save. <clears throat> All right, back at it again. <laughs> you know, part of it is just knowing when you ought to run. I mean, I should have just run away right, right when I got in that battle because, you know, one hit from that guy was enough to kill. Matt, and Matt has the best armor and everything, so. Yikes. Right, let's see if we can get into one decent fight, and then we'll, I'll spare you the rest. <laughs> this is the slogged level two. It is nice to see that leveling screen, though. Okay, da -da. Remy detects something unusual. What do you detect, Remy? Lodge within the throat of a crushed skull, you discover a strange key. As if the deceased was trying to swallow it, when... Dot, dot, dot. Oh, we found a key of rum. Go ahead and give that to Cuba, I guess. Okay, well, we found a key. Interesting. Didn't find that before. Okay, let's see. Can we get into a fight? At least it moves at a quick pace. <laughs> this would really stink if it took like several seconds in between each movement. Just trying to find another couple of battles. May have to rest up. And sometimes you can just keep resting and they'll attack you that way. But the problem with that strategy is a lot of your guys will be asleep and the monsters will get free hits on you. Yeah, this is really taking a while, but they, you know, they said it could take hours. <laughs> there we go, finally, three bats. Uh, this shouldn't be too bad. Okay, let's go ahead and just. Do all of our strategy, loot them, and we'll, people that can hide, let's hide. Yes, Cuba, let's use your armor spell. Maybe I need to use it on Matt, jeez. <clears throat> you think he's got really good armor. I'll try it on Emma again, though. Okay, Remy hides and failed, plays the loot. Bat falls asleep, Bat falls asleep. Everybody's asleep, excellent. <laughs> Boom, one down. Oh, it's a sleep in you missed, Matt. Come on. I'm ashamed of you. Okay, you should just be able to fight this time. Uh, wing dies, elm arrow. That'd be pretty hard to shoot a bat with an arrow, man. That would take some talent. Okay, there's one successful fight. Let's take a look at our characters quick and just see how everybody's progressing. So if we switch over to uh, skills, you can see how that sword and shield are going up automatically. Uh, scouting, of course, that's not going to go up automatically. Let's take a quick peek to it, Cuba. Skills. It's getting a little bit better with this pole, but uh, you know, thaumaturgy going up nicely. And there should be oratory going up as well. So the higher that gets, again, we need to be casting spells a lot, I suppose, to <clears throat> you know maximize that. I don't think we can cast armor shield again. Here, maybe we can. No, nope. I think it takes more points than we have. So let's just exit out of that. But kind of like in uh, Elder Scrolls, you know, you could just keep casting the spell. You do have to wait for the uh, regeneration. There we go. There's a nice little fight. Five vines. It's probably want to swing, hide. You get kind of a, a rhythm going eventually where you can do this really quickly. Let's see, Remy, go ahead and hide. Becky, fight. Rust, Cuba. 
You know, we could do a sleep spell. <clears throat> Just to have something to cast. Maybe I'll do that next time if there's another round, which I'm pretty sure there will be. For now, let's just uh, thrust that staff in there, start the fight. Okay, good, she got to move first and put them all to sleep. Sleep, little vines, because vines sleep, you know, that's the thing. Um, Rumi failed to hide. I wonder if he gets uh, better at it, if they get better at it when they fail or is it only when they're successful? It's kind of neat how even if they get hit, if they... There's right in the pod. <laughs> Thrust into his quarterstaff. <laughs> right in the pod. That sounds painful. You know, I think we're doing okay with these with these vines. And just to mix it up a little bit, let's... Uh, yeah, let's let Remy... Or let's let uh, Emma fight. And we'll let Cuba cast his sleep spell. Get a little experience with the spell casting. One, okay. <clears throat> so he gets to cast first, good. Unaffected. One of them falls asleep. Two of them falls asleep. Two of them fall asleep. Emma shoots and misses. Remy shoots and hits. Five damage. Boom. Good job, Remy. Sarah swings, hits. Eight damage. Right in the roots. Thrust that quarter staff into the vine, eight damage. Bada boom, bada boom. <laughs> Pretty awesome. <laughs> You're making it look easy. All right, so that's, you know, going to be what I'm going to be. I'm going to be doing this for at least another hour <laughs> to try to get these guys up to level uh, <clears throat> three. And then we can start trying to open up these doors that are locked. I'm not even going to mess with them now because you just jam it up. But there we go. Let's do this one last battle, then we can, uh, and then I'll fast forward. <laughs> so, swing, swing. Uh, go ahead and have her hide, hide, fight. I don't know if I have enough for another sleep spell. Looks like I might be able to cast another armor shield. Yeah. Try that on Emma again. Okay. <clears throat> Remy hides. Rat misses, rat misses, Becky miss, Cuba, rat, <laughs> Matt miss, <laughs> Sarah miss, rat claws miss. A lot of missing, which is a good thing. Okay, let's fight. Let's have everybody fight. <clears throat> rat miss, rat miss, rat. They're all going for me. <laughs> they know their enemy. A lot of missing. Whoa. You know, I'm pretty sure Becky probably has a bless spell. Maybe I want to cast that. Almost done with this fight. But I'm going to guess bless probably raises up the... Makes it easier to hit. Might want to double check that just to make sure. Let's see. Swing. Uh, still up. <clears throat> yeah, let's check this... Uh, Bless spell. Let's see if that's what it does. Let's see. Bless. Magically lowers the party's AC and enhances their chance to hit a monster relative to the power level of the spell. So that's definitely what we need to do when we're fighting stuff that's hard to hit. Body no penetration. Cuba. Miss. Miss. I'm going to check my arrows. I might be running low at this point. Rat dies. Boom, rat dies. Excellent work. Alright, 75 XP, 6 gold, each share of the loot. Again, you gotta save after every battle. <laughs> so you do not want to have to see that XP go away. So I gotta get this up above a thousand before I'm ready to level. So I'll stop here, stop recording, uh, get closer, and I'll try to come back right before I level so you can see that process. Okay, so about another hour I've been <laughs> I figured out a routine to get to, uh, uh, to expedite the process. I just leveled up my rogue. Uh, Sarah, I guess she gets to level up before everybody else. I wasn't aware that she was just about to level her and switched it up, but you can it just sort of randomly boosted her stats and she's got a few more hit points, I believe, but 
I think that's about it. So anyway, here's my technique to get some some quick combat. You just activate this uh, move mode here. So instead of turning around, uh, you can make it so that it moves instead. Then you can just go left and right, left and right, <laughs> until you get an encounter. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Maybe this battle will put me over and you can see the, the leveling process because it's it's a good reward for all the work You, know, you, you kind of want to savor that uh, So Matt will go in swinging Sarah, let's hide. She does a lot of damage when she can do her surprise attacks uh, Remy, you know, I'm not actually sure if the surprise attacks works with a ranged attack But let's let's just see maybe we can get it to work. <laughs> you know, this always misses anyway. Uh, Becky has a spell called uh, Bless that's just, it does, you know, I think I pointed that out earlier, it makes it easier to hit, but I guess it must take three points to cast. Is that the deal there? Let's see, Bless. I guess she doesn't have enough points to cast, but we can cast a, a healing spell, because I just noticed one of my Remy there is kind of low, and I'd sure hate for him to get all the way to the end of the battle and he dies suddenly. He only got like four hit points. <laughs> Emma will want to use this loot, and my god, I don't know how the hell you'd ever get through this without a bard <laughs> with a loot. Because <laughs> uh, the, the sleep spell is not nearly as effective. Let's go ahead and fight with him, too, I guess. Do a bash. All right, let's see what happens here. Remy hides in the shadows. Good. Hmm. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> well, this is too bad. Um, I have to reload now, obviously. So let's get through this. Uh, you have to get all the way to the end here and then say run, run, run away, run away, run away. Start fighting. Blah, blah, blah. But you see just how quickly these things can go can go south, especially when you're level one. You've got like four hit points. Basically, if you get hit, you're dead. And it's totally not worth... I mean, if you used a vitality point, you'd be even weaker. So I just don't think that's the way to play. All right, let's go <laughs> Let's go back. Let's see, did I save? I hope I saved it before my... Yeah, level two. You really just have to get absolutely obsessed with just saving, saving, saving. Let's do a little jig again. Maybe won't. Maybe six was just too many. Sometimes you should just run away, right? You know, it's not if you don't want to have to do the save game reload dance. If it looks like it's anything but a small scrape, <laughs> you can just. <laughs> uh, man, it's just like, even with this technique, it takes a long time. My goodness. Okay. Now that's driving me crazy. Let's do a go ahead and heal up while I'm thinking about it. Let's see, heal wounds. Uh, Remy, get Remy back up to shape. Good. And you notice too, I'm camped right here in front of this fountain, so I can just top off my my le levels here. You know, it's really too bad if if only this fountain was for hit points, man. <laughs> that would just be great. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Go ahead and save again, because I don't even want to do that little step again. And da -da 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 -da, waiting for the rats to come. Oh, sweet rats. There we go. Oh, boy, what is this? One rogue. This might be too big of a fight. We'll see. Maybe I can do this. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, look, my uh, bless still hasn't come back. Or I need another point for that to work. Let's see. Go ahead and fight then. Do the bash. Just by all means, loot it away. Uh, let's go ahead and cast an armor shield. You never quite know who to put it on. I mean, anybody. I guess Remy's probably got the least amount of health. All right. <laughs> this will leave me a... <laughs> oh. Okay, missed, good, failed to hide, plays the loot, he falls asleep. Armor shield is cast, Remy hides and can't even hide from this guy that's asleep. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, uh, let's fight it out. 
And we will try to do it again. Let's just do the default options. Boom, hit five damage in the hand, and he's down, and he's dead. That's the only 34 XP. Two rutabagas? What the? What's a rutabaga? I'm not really sure what a rutabaga is for. I guess that wasn't quite enough to put me over. I must be getting close, though. Yeah, next fight for sure. So let's do one more. Waiting for the rats to come. I'm waiting for the rats to come. Ouch, ouchie, ouchie. Da, 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 da. What? Huh? What happened there? Hello? Okay. Seems to have jammed up. I'll have to reload DOS box. <laughs> I guess I got a little carried away. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me uh, restart the game. Business. Resume the saved game. This again. You know, I don't. I notice if I just hit enter, it loads up. But the thing about that is, you know, some of these games, they, they make it seem like you're in the game, but. You know, it puts a big penalty on you. So I don't know if maybe they are using a crack version for this GOG edition so that it's, I don't have to bother with the code. Actually, let me check that out real quick just so I'm not giving you bad information. Okay, so I dug around a little bit and it appears that the GOG version is the cracked version. So in other words, you don't have to bother with that magic words thing. Unless you just want to. You know, it's worth doing at least once just so you can remember what it was like. <laughs> I wonder if the person that cracked the software ever got there. Ever got any money. Alright, two bats. This ought to do it. But you know, just I'm paranoid at this point. I don't want to die and have to reload, so we're gonna do everything by the book. <laughs> I'll have her hide, him hide, Becky, she's got enough points to use her Bless again, that's good. Bless is a really good spell because it makes it easier to hit. At this point, I need all the help I can get with that. Go ahead and loot again. Cuba, let's go with the armor shield. Stick that on... You know, really, Emma, I keep putting on, on her because she's only got like two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. Failed to hide. Falls asleep. Falls asleep, so we should be good for this round anyway. Bat one, bat down. Sarah hides and fails. Bada boom, bada boom, boom, boom. Let's go. Shoots the bat, miss. Swings the bat, missed. Missed. Hit. Oh, I don't have to kill it. Miss. Oh, come on. No, don't die. <laughs> yes. I swear. I could literally lose a character at this point. You just don't know in this game. One bad I'm just one bad roll away from having a reload. Okay, there we go. Okay, that should be enough. 33 XP. There we go. So you can see it randomly goes through, adds some uh it adds some things. And I get some skill points. I didn't get any skill points, so I guess it automatically does it for the thief. Uh with my with math though, I can go in and add some of this stuff. You know, just plug a couple of points into artifacts. Scouting, let's go ahead and put some more into that. Okay, he's good. Oh, I guess he's the only one that, that leveled. Yeah, so he's he's good. What is MKS? There's always stuff in this game I don't know what the heck it is. Experience points needed to level, maybe? No, that can't be right. So I don't know what MKS is. I'd have to look it up. Uh, well, surely this must be getting close. I guess if I really want to know, I could look it up in the in the clue book. Well, let's go ahead and save it there. Do one more fight because I want to get everybody up to level two, and then I got to do all this again to get them to level three. We gotta be at least that high before we start messing around with locks. Waiting for the rats to come. Ah, ah. 
You know, you gotta work in this game, man. <laughs> Even getting monsters to fight is hard. I'm glad I figured this technique out, though. I would have had to spin. There we go. Couple of rats. Perfect. Exactly what I like to fight. I think every time you hide, I, my theory is that, at least when they're successful, maybe all the time, but certainly when they're successful, that will, you know, make it easier to hide next time. At least that's what, what I'm hoping. Go ahead and have her hide, too. I, I should be able to get through this fight without the loot. But who knows? I probably should have used it. Okay, let's see. What else are we doing here? Uh, Cuba? Uh, let's just fight. Rat bites Sarah hit. Remy fails. Sarah fails. <laughs> miss, miss, miss. You really need a bless spell to fight these things, though, because they are tricky to hit. Even when they're sleeping, sometimes these people miss. Okay, well, you can't seem to hide appropriately. <laughs> Let's just fight then. <laughs> uh, I could use the loot. Uh, nice thing about doing it right in front of the fountain is I can just keep using that loot and then pop right up and get my stamina back. So it's, you know, I actually, if I had a Drake in here, I could be doing that breath weapon every time and just using the fountain. So you might want to think about a Drake, <laughs> you know, maybe even two Drakens. <laughs> you could just breath weapon, breath weapon, stamina, come back. You know, be really efficient. Oh, Cuba, you got him with your quarter staff. Let's see, is that 50 XP? Surely that's enough to. Wow. You know, I guess these other classes just must take a ton more XP. You know, I, I wouldn't have thought it would be much more than a couple hundred XP difference. I definitely like to level up my spellcasters. There we go. There's one rat. <laughs> Watch it kill me. Miss, 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 miss. Hit three points of damage. Hit three points of damage. Dead. Boom. 25 XP. Is that going to be it? Nope. Okay. Well, I just. I have to check the, the clue book, I guess, to see what. How much is this really going to take? Let's see. Uh, you want to look at it too? Oh, what the heck is that? Ah, uh, clue book, clue book. Not that one. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, here's the table that shows you. So, oh yeah, look at this. Rangers needs 2,800 XP. My God. Almost twice. 800 more points than the fighter needed. Oh, actually, I was looking at that wrong. Okay, he just needs 1,400. <laughs> so it's not, that, it's not that bad. Let's see, what about our wizards? Um... Get to the right thing. Uh, da, 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 da. So the wizard needs, or mage, I guess, needs 1250. So they ought to be. You know, it's, what is that they always say? Just one more turn, you know, just one more fight, one more battle. So he needs. It might be a couple more fights. I mean, let's just do it quick. Man, can you imagine if I hadn't figured out that little technique? There's another rat. Let me see if I can help you with that little breathing problem. Sarah, Emma, Cuba, boom, boom. Man, Cuba, go with that stick. Like a martial artist back there. I think he's killed more rats than anybody at this point. I, I really do. He's a mage, but he's got this quarterstaff, and he's just... Man, he just... He's got a thing about rats. He's like me. He just really wants them all dead. He's kind of like you know, Mr. Miyagi with the chopsticks. Okay, back, back, back. Oh, exit. Okay, uh, da, da, I gotta get to a position where I can. I need a little room to spread out here. Yes, save, 
save save give me a rogue send me a rodent oh we got a bat a flying rat okay should be able to take out a bat boom one point of damage shoot him miss bat miss 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 <laughs> hit down <laughs> oh 53 xp for that you know i wonder how random the xp is all right one more of those ought to do it Yeah, get back. Relax. <laughs> Wizardry 6, Bane of the Cosmic Forge, folks. Okay, this is crazy. Uh, you can try to rest. A lot of times you'll get into a random encounter, but what happens is they... Uh, you get attacked while you're sleeping, and that's not much fun. You know, I might have enough money, too. Maybe I should go back downstairs and see if there's some more equipment I could buy. Get some new spell books. I don't want to waste my... Uh, I don't want to learn spells that I could just get from a spell book. But those spell books are really pricey. There we go. Oh, oh, oh there we go. This will do it for sure. Three whole juicy rats. <laughs> Okay, fa uh, fight, hide, hide, use the blessing, for God's sake, we're going to need that, otherwise we'll just miss every time. Uh, let's see, Emma, use your lovely loot. Cuba, let's go ahead and use a, no, not a sleep spell, yeah, armor shield, stick that on Emma. Okay, rat. no penetration. You know, actually, I don't think these rats can attack the back row, so I might have wasted that spell, but... Oh, well, it's experience points anyway. Oh, look at them, they're asleep. Oh, one down. Good job, Matt. Remy hides. Good, Matt. Remy, you're learning. Hit. No penetration. Missed. Hit. Tail. <laughs> right in the tail. <laughs> Take that rat tail. Right, defeat of the monster, 75 XP. That should do it. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta be like, I gotta be like five points away. Oh, this is driving me insane. Okay, what? What's the deal? What's the deal? Well, he's like ten points away. Okay. Uh, one more time. Then. <laughs> one more time. Do -do -do -do. This is quality entertainment, folks. It doesn't get much better than this. It's more fun than dancing at a, at a club, though. At least I hate that. This is actually semi-enjoyable. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, can you believe this? Sometimes it just seems like there's... No rats left in the whole damn place. Let's rest up again. You know one thing that's great about this game? You don't have to eat and drink or worry about torchlight. Imagine how big of a pain that would be. You know, is there just no rats within this two meter space? Okay, okay. Maybe, it, maybe it's on to me. I can trick it a little bit. There we go. Okay, <laughs> this will do it, I promise you. Fight. Uh, let's go ahead and thrust. Hide, hide. You know, after a while, I can almost do this in your... I'll probably be dreaming about this tonight, you know. It's, it just takes a lot of work. Okay, Cuba, let's do your... At least this time we know to cast the armor shield on somebody who's... Uh, let's cast on Remy. I think Remy has the least. By the way, I reordered the folks a little bit to put some 
Uh, even though Emma has better armor, she just so got so few hit points, she just dies with one blow. So I'm trying to put her in a little bit further back. Okay, some of them are asleep. We're blessed. We should be able to do this. Oh. I'll tell you one thing. It would really suck if you forgot to save it after like four or five battles. <laughs> and then just one of your characters just pff, dies. And then you got to uh, reload all that. That would be intolerable. So definitely want to get just saving it. Crazy with the saves. Oh, backstabbed with a cutlass. Okay, we're going to do it. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so everybody ought to be level 2 at this point. Who is this, our priest? Yeah, all the way up to 13 with that pole and staff. And seven, level 7 oratory. Let's go ahead and plug another point into theology. And, you know, I'll do the oratory. Okay. Got a new priest spell. So let's see, you can't learn everything as a priest, obviously. Ooh, quite a few options. Hmm. You know, I know that... Um, let's see... Identify Cure Lesser Condition. I think that's going to be the one I want. Yes, that's supposed to be absolutely uh, invaluable. So we got that now. Okay, who is this? Our bard? Okay, pick a skill. Let's see. Um, it's actually a pretty interesting choice. So you see the ninjutsu did go up some. Uh, I don't think I've got any spells yet. Who knows? I guess I might as well start building that up. Okay. Um... Here's our mage. This will be this will be nice. Oratory, thaumaturgy. Bump that up, and then let's put another point in the uh, oratory. Get a new spell. Excellent. New toys to play with. <laughs> Missile shield. Yeah, this knock knock spell might be really useful when I can't get through a uh, oh, magic missile. Yeah, I've actually read that magic missile is not very good in this game. Uh, what would be better to learn then? Shilling touch terror. I'm not sure what terror does. Knock knock is probably what I would want to do uh, I just I know it's probably not the best spell but magic missile just it's just calling to me I love that spell in D&D &D. <laughs> just gotta pick it I'm sorry okay um, so now everybody is level 2 so I should be in a little bit better shape to go back downstairs and let's see if there's any new items to buy from the uh, vendor there. Matter of fact, let me check my arrows. So down to 64 arrows. <laughs> arrow, 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 I don't want to open up doors yet though, because I want I need more points than. Uh... What is this? Did I go in the wrong one? Whew. Queek wag, I got nervous there for a second. <sighs> Let's see what he's got this time. Healing potions, daggers, rapier, bastard sword. Look at that claymore's 900. I wonder if that's better than what I got. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, some more bullets. Got some more skull caps, fur leggings, quilt legging. I'm actually curious about the this claymore. That's usually a two-handed weapon, isn't it? Let's see if it's in this. Uh, I'll look in the clue book here. No matches found. Uh, I guess it's not going to... My search in this... Uh, 
I'm spelling it's Claymore, right? <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes you just cannot find it anywhere. Okay, items and weapons. Claymore. Damage 4 to 10. It is a two-hander. So I'd have to lose my, my shield. Don't know if that's such a good idea at this point. What's this bastard sword business? That's a one hand. But you know, it's probably still not as good as mine. So maybe I should just stick with what I got. Let's see what else he's got here. Bullets. I'd have to look at my characters to see if we've got... I'm pretty sure fur is better than quilt. Let's see, anything else here of interest? Not so much. Got a heavy healing potion. I haven't really been using those. Let's just go. You know, I could keep coming back in. He's got different inventory every time, but that is just such a pain. I want to get in a little bit bigger fight and try out some of this new stuff. However, there we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe not this big of a fight. <laughs> Well, let's try it. Let's see. Fight. Swing. Maybe I could put that other group to sleep. That would be nice, wouldn't it? All right. Becky, you do your blessing. Yes. Emma, you use your loot. Try this big group, I think. And I want to try out Magic Missile. Where'd Magic Missile go? There it is. Now let's try out the magic missile on the rogues. You know, if nothing else, it'll give him a chance to raise up his oratory. Rogue falls asleep. Oh, hit Sarah. Blast magic missile. Boom, seven damage. Okay, so that's... <laughs> I guess I can only cast maybe one or maybe two before I run out of uh, juice, but... I think that'll still be useful. Definitely give him something to do besides thwacking stuff with his, his quarterstaff. Okay, let's go. You know, I'm going to put about half of them on group one. Let's put the other guys on the one at the bottom. Yeah, I'll just fight. Yep. Let's see how this goes. Let's hit Rogue dies. So I think it's going to get a lot easier from here on out. Even hitting level 2 and getting those extra little bit of a boost from the leveling. And they should have enough hit points to now to at least take one blow. I'll check it out after the battle. Swing, 6 damage, boom. So that would have killed me before. 138 XP. Now we're talking. Now we're... Oh, I guess my ranger didn't level until now. <laughs> that's that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, let's see. He can learn. Uh, he could do Skullduggery, too. I don't know why I'd bother with that. Ninjutsu is, is the hiding skill. I don't know when he starts to get alchemy. It could be a while. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and plug a point into it. Okay, well, I'm going to save it here. And again, go back to my routine and get back to uh, to grinding to level 3. Okay, well that didn't take as long as I thought. I was I was right. Once you hit level 2, uh, everything starts to speed up. You can take on more fights. So I've leveled everybody up. There's a couple of them that are still at level 3. I mean at level 2. But I think we're finally ready to start exploring some of these rooms. So he's level three. The rogue might even be higher than that. Let's see. Sarah. Yeah, level three. She definitely levels up faster than anybody else. Which I'm pretty sure that's true in Pool of Radiance. It seems like I remember my uh, rogues leveling up before everybody else. But <laughs> now let the fun begin. Uh, now I've, I'm not going to use uh, the hints to see what's in these rooms. I don't think there's much in here but battles. and. I think what I'm planning to do here is, 
is clear this uh, level out, then that'll probably be enough to make a, you know, for you to make a decision on whether this game is for you or not. It's actually a pretty damn big game. We're just scratching the surface of it here in this video, but uh, it's really got its hooks into me, <laughs> nice and firm. <laughs> Uh, I will say I've had to reload a couple times, and it's even crashed to the, you know, frozen, and I had to restart everything a few times, but I've stuck to it. Okay, they recommend that you save, kind of an old refrain, but every time you're trying to open up something, uh, save beforehand just in case you fail, and it gets jammed up, you can just reload and try again. You know, that's bordering on cheesing the mechanics, as far as I'm concerned, but... You know, it is what it is. I don't want to get the game into a... You know, have all these doors I can't get into, so... Uh, we'll just say that's uh, magic. Okay. Picking routine looks like this, and... My understanding is this is just random. You know, it looks like there's some kind of skill here, but I think it's just up to uh, her skill. All right, she got in. Now let's... Uh, <laughs> save it again <laughs> I think every time she does that it actually raises up her uh, her lock picking which is cool okay let's get on in here we've got an encounter with three creeping vines should be able to handle this with no problem <laughs> say it the fool <laughs> watch him kick my ass okay try to hide again to get that sneak attack bonus you know I've, I've taken out so many groups of these I just don't think I need to go you know, crazy with the spells and stuff, but uh, uh, we'll just see how this round goes. I did save it right before this, so so no biggie. You know, also picked up another spell with Cuba here, Energy Blast, when he leveled up. So it's, it's kind of neat you get these six different schools. So if you learn at least one spell from each school, it gives you a little bit more bang for your buck. Okay, let's go for this. Emma hits five damage. Boom. Good job. She's getting better. You know, this game, you really see your characters getting better. Uh, and that's cool. Hit seven damage. You know, that's one thing I love to I like about this game more than I do uh, Pool of Radiance, which was a couple years earlier. Is that, you know, in that game, you don't really see any, any improvement in your characters until you, uh, you know, level up. Here, you got that skill system running. So every time you use your sword or your axe or your loot, you know, you get a little bit better. It's a little bit more of a gradual improvement than just these plateaus. Uh, punctuated equilibrium, if you want to get fancy with it. Okay, piles of rotted furniture lie strewn around the room. In the center rests the remains of a massive wood table suggesting a former meeting chamber. So that's the kind of thing right there that if we were playing uh, Pool of Radiance, that would, it would have just said, look in the journal, page 12, to see what is going on here. And let's see, there's a chest over there. I don't see anything else in the room. Uh, so let's go ahead and, uh, I guess, inspect this chest. And our thief should be able to detect anything. Oh, so this is kind of interesting. So it says uh, pole row there. And there's, that's a bit of a code. Uh, it's supposed to be a scramble, like a word jumble. I'm not really sure why that letter is red. But we can write this down. So P O. P-O-L-R-O, and then if we try to disarm it, let's see, well, yeah, so that has a P, an O, an R, so it must be Vorpal Blades. Disarm the trap, found six dirks and a magic missile scroll, and three, no, good God, <laughs> a bunch of stuff in there, and a, oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, I go ahead and give the Dirks to, uh, I guess, Sarah. You know, we're already getting to the point where we have to be careful with... Uh, what is this? Stamina potions. Well, I guess Emma could probably use those more than anybody. Uh, Book of Directions. I think that will actually let him learn that spell. I haven't used one yet, so this will be fun. Let's see. Uh, use Cuba... Remember in Pool of Radiance, you had to scribe a scroll, and there was a chance that you would mess it up. Let's see. I didn't get any messages. What happened? <laughs> Did I learn it? That's weird. You think it would have popped up something that said I either failed or 
No. Well, what, what, what the, what the what? <laughs> do I still have it? Uh, let's see. What in the world? You know, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if he learned that or just it failed. I don't know. Let's reload. Let's see. I don't want to waste it. Okay, let's see. Review Cuba. So he's got a book of directions. Let's see. Do I equip it? Spell? Uh, let's try to use it again. Maybe it just failed. The spell has been scribed into your personal spell book. Okay, so I guess it worked that time. Good job, Cuba. I don't know if it's Cuba or Cuba. <laughs> Go. I like Cuba. Okay, let's see. What was that one called? Direction? I don't think it's, we really need direction since we have uh, this auto mapper. Because I think what that does... Go ahead and use it. Yeah, if you notice here, it lights up our icon so that we can see what direction we're turning. Probably not the most useful thing in the world, but it's a free spell and it's something I could cast to you know, build up my, my spell ability. All right, here's one bat. Surely we can take care of this bat. <laughs> or maybe not. You know, you almost always want to cast Bless, I suppose. Look at that. Nobody... Oh, it's a huge bat. <laughs> you think a huge bat would be easier to hit. Oh, well, let's see. Swing... Swing, you, uh, Becky, go ahead and do your, your bless. Oh, I got this enchanted blade spell I'm kind of curious about. I need to look that up and see what it does. Let's do the bless for now. Go ahead and try to put it to sleep. And Cuba, I think we want to try out this. Oh, I've already used that. Okay. Well, let's do the other one. Uh, magic missile, yes. No. Oh, I guess he's plumb out of spells. Let's see what else, what can he do? He's got seven points. Could try to put it to sleep. Uh, do the armor. That's a, generally a pretty good thing to cast. I think this bat might be able to tag anybody. We'll see. No, it just went for Matt. Oh, six points of damage to the head. And now it's asleep, though. Hit. No penetration. There, it's dead. Good. <laughs> Cast that bless for nothing. You know, I'm, I I wish that there was a way to see, and there's there's probably a way to see what effects are active. I just I don't know where it is. Um, that's not it. Uh, review. So I cast that spell on Remy. I'm just not seeing it anywhere, though. I wonder what MKS is. <laughs> That's bothering me. <laughs> I'm going to look that up real quick. Okay, so I looked that up. It's monster kill score. So it means I've killed... I guess I got the death blow on 19 <laughs> monsters is what that means. Uh, so pretty cool. You know, I imagine some people that played this might have gotten their friends together. We used to do this with Pool of Radiance back in the day. And each, you know, we'd have a group of guys standing around. They'd, each one would have a character. It'd be one person at the keyboard, but they'd be telling, a, you know, that person at the keyboard what to do. You know, what they want their character to do. It's kind of a little bit of a clunky system, but, you know, it's also kind of fun. It was a, a fun time. All right, let's get this open. Pick it again. Sarah, uh, can we do it? Yes, yes. So much easier once you level up a little bit. <laughs> Save it. Let's go on in here and see what we got. Only dust and cobwebs remain in this now empty room. Okay. You think we should search a little bit just to make sure nothing? I don't see anything. You know, I'm always trying to keep my eye open for buttons or anything like that. I guess it really is just a straight-up empty room. Okay, well, let's try a couple more. 
open and I picked the lock Sarah boom success it's really good let's go oh, I probably should have saved it before I came in here oh oh gee well this will be fun three rogues one group of three one group of four okay here we go fight let's try to take out that group maybe Sarah can hide maybe Remy can hide Becky, we're going to want a big old bless <laughs> spell. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and get that going. Emma, we're going to want you to try to put that other group to sleep. Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, let's do the armor shield and put that on to... Even though Matt's a little bit lower on hit points, I know they're going to go after either Remy or Sarah. So let's, I'll stick it on. I'll go ahead and put it on Matt, I guess. All right, let's see how this plays out. All right, one rogue down, two rogues asleep, three rogues asleep. Wow, four rogues asleep. That will help. Hopefully they'll stay down at least one or two rounds. Sarah failed to hide. Remy failed to hide. And Matt... Swings and misses. Becky cast bless. Rogue misses. Kuba gets his shield spell. Matt hits in the foot. <laughs> Imagine getting hit in the foot so bad you died, man. Okay, that's a little better. So the, there's a zero there. I don't know if you can see that, but it means I guess that there's, even though there's four, uh, uh, none of them are active this round, I suppose. Go ahead and fight the group that is awake. You know, it's it's really good when you get that uh, uh, surprise attack, but it's it's kind of hard to hide. I've noticed. I guess I haven't got my score up high enough. All right, Kuba, go ahead and get in the mix. I swear he's probably. I should check his MKS. That's probably higher than anybody's. All right, another. For some reason, I keep hitting them in the foot and killing them. There's another one. Kuba with that staff. I'm telling you, he's just a badass. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like, was it Morgan from The Walking Dead with that, you know, bow staff? He's the real deal. Okay, Matt, come on. Now, I think we've probably got it from here. You know, I could do another. Yeah, let's go ahead and do another loot. Serenade these rogues. Let's see, do I have any other toys to play with? I could do a magic missile. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do a magic missile. Uh, I guess it takes four points to cast that. Oh, well, I'll just keep going with the staff. <laughs> hey, go with what works, right? Rogues asleep, 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 asleep. Okay. Man, you see how much e Oh, right in the head. Cutlass to the head. Elmero missing. Sword didn't penetrate. Hand. You know, it seemed like... I guess they have a, a big chest piece on or something. Uh, okay, I should be able to just, uh, default the rest of this. Let's see. Arrow misses. Arrow misses. Man, they, are, <laughs> they cannot hit a damn thing with those ranged weapons. It's probably better just to give them a staff. Well, 242 uh, pair of suede pants. Does anybody need suede pants? I don't... I'm trying to think if those are better than what I got. Got a ranger level. Good, good, good. Well, I tell you, it's just so nice uh, to get those levels. Oh, and I forgot to tell you this. My bard actually can cast a spell now. So I should go check that out. Oh, my ranger can too. Awesome. And these will be alchemy spells. Acid splash. You know, you probably want to go heal wounds just because that is so critical. So now i got two characters that can heal wounds. A few remnants of broken chairs lie clumped in this once dainty parlor. Save, save, save. Well, I tell you, this game picked up quick after I hit level three. 
Let's see, broken shares. I guess there's no other secrets in here. Okay, let's see. There must be some. You know, my auto mapper here. It looks like there's something off to the left. Gotta be a, a button or something somewhere. <laughs> I don't see anything. Gotta be a secret here somewhere. I guess maybe you gotta go up and come back down. Sometimes that's the gig. Okay, I got a couple more rooms I can check out here. You know, while I'm next to this fountain, I should go ahead and stand back up. It might not hurt to rest, to be honest with you. Let's see. Exit. Save. Okay. Save again, just in case I get screwed by the lock. <laughs> Open. Now, I guess the doors are never trapped. Oh, I failed. Okay, well, let's try that again. Do, 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 do. Open. Pick Sarah. Success. And encounter. We got some spaghetti and meatballs to fight. Three vines and four vines. That's a lot of vines. Okay, uh, fight the vines. Try to hide again. It's, it's it really is cool when they can when they can hide. It's just hard. It's very hard to pull off for some reason. Do the bless spell again. Definitely want to send these vines to sleep if we can. At least one group of them. And let's. Let's go ahead and do the sleep on the other group as well. Maybe we can put them all asleep and we won't get it, take so much damage. I notice Matt's looking a little bit bruised. Okay, they're all going to sleep. Remy hides successfully for once. That'll be awesome. No penetration. Sarah hides too. Good, good, good. So look, look what happens when I attack out of, out of hiding. Look at a surprise attack on these things. Oh, go to sleep, my little spaghetti and meatballs. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Except for you. You go to <laughs> sleep permanently. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a little better. Go ahead and take out that top group. Yes, yes, yes. Becky. Let's just focus all on that top group. You know, it is kind of unfortunate, but it doesn't automatically switch to the second group. If, you know, those first two guys kill them all, the other guys just lose their turn. So the rest of them will just lose their turn. Okay, here we go. Let's just try to do this the default way. Four damage, one down. Surprise, Cutlass. Oh, she missed. That stinks. When they managed to pull it off, I've seen it do as much as 20 points. Kuma. Boom, boom, boom. Nice work. 68 XP, loot worth 8 gold. Fibrous Shreeds. Fibrous. Probably should be. Is that a spelling error? Shreds? Fibrous shreds of stained rot cling to the walls where colorful tapestries. Where colorful. Man, this is. I <laughs> badly proofread here. Uh, where colorful tapestries once proclaimed sovereignty in this official chamber. With grim mockery, the sweeter taste of a mighty throne perched high above the room has long turned sour as it sits condemned to languish in its own final sentence. If there is any last judgment to be decreed upon this fallen chamber and tarnished throne, 
It must be gleaned from the decay that it laps upon its own dais <laughs> as itself festers and rots, bearing witness to... I feel like I'm reading Michael Moorcock. Uh, witness to emptiness, uh, filth and stench, silently weeping tears of its own despoiled substance. Good God! Uh, so in other words, there's an old crumpy, crummy tapestry and a throne in here? <laughs> okay, but there's another door. Okay, I guess there's... Well, there's two more doors here. Both locked. This is kind of the old throne room, I suppose. Okay, let's try to pick this lock, sir. Good luck. Ah, failure. But um, ba -da -da -dum, dum, 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 resume. Try again. There we go. Make sure to save it before I go in there. Okay. Although this small chamber seems as dilapidated as the others, peculiar obtrusions up through the floor show signs of a more recent invasion made by entities unknown. Hmm. Worms? Burrowing rats? I don't see anything in here. You could try searching. I don't know if you... I'm pretty sure... I don't know if the search just searches like the immediate square. Or if it looks around. Okay, let's go ahead and open that door. Got it. Okay. In we go. Yeah, it's more spaghetti and meatballs. All right, you know the drill. <laughs> Fight. Hide. Oh, what the hell, hide. Hasn't had much luck, but it's got to work eventually, right? Emma, use your loot on that group. And Cuba, let's go ahead and use your sleep too on the top group. Mm. Okay, this is bad. These are those misting ones. Yeah, these send all my folks to sleep. Uh, this could be... I could lose this fight because it's, once they start putting everybody to sleep, it gets really tough. Uh, let's see. I'm putting them to sleep too, but we'll see how this goes. Have I got anybody awake to cast anything? Oh, Becky Spell Fizzled. Okay, what are we dealing with here? The Fuming Vines. There's only one of them awake. Now, Becky's got a spell. Oh, she didn't have enough points to cast it. Oh! This is not good. Okay, let's try this Enchanted Blade spell. I'm not really sure what this does, but... I don't cast it on somebody. Interesting. Let's see. Does she have a spell that would be useful? Just armor shield. Uh, don't know how that would really be helpful here, but I guess we can cast it anyway. You know, this is where you'd really need like a fireball. <laughs> Something like that would just be tremendous. Now let's do the energy blast, I guess. Really want to take these fuming vines out quickly if we can. Fizzled. She just fizzling everything all of a sudden. Okay, six damage to a fuming vine. That does kill it. Good. And got the armor shield. I think I might have a potion of cure lesser condition. I don't know if I want to use those. I guess I could. I always buy it buy some more I guess she doesn't have it okay we'll just fight and Emma I wonder if she's got some I wonder who's got that potion no it's not her you know these things might be hard to put to sleep if they are 
they <laughs> they'd be immune to they'd be should be immune to sleep since they have that ability. Let's see, do I have anything else? Yeah, I can throw a magic missile at him. That'll be nice. Let's see, lashes. Hopefully they won't do that fuming mist every turn. Don't seem to be too tough. Well, they can, I can still send them to send them asleep. Rock by fuming vine. Here goes the magic missile. Hit five damage. Man, Kuba. This game, it's all about Kuba. I mean, if he's not killing them with magic, he's just whacking them with a big stick. Becky, nice work. Okay, got a, one more of those fuming vines. He's just fuming over there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just put them all on that fuming vine. We don't want to get take any chances. Sarah, and Matt, and Remy are still asleep. Even getting hit doesn't wake them up. Oh, great. Nobody, no changes. And they're back. Okay. All right, let's, come on. We kill that vine. Kill that freaking vine. Becky. We want to, uh, yeah, thrust. Emma, we want to use your loot once again. And Kuba, just hit him with your stick. Okay. Free damage. And it's down. Oh, but I wasted all those other attacks. That's too bad. Let's see. One asleep. Two asleep. Three asleep. Four asleep. <laughs> and Sarah hides. <laughs> Okay, we should be able to clean these guys up. They're all asleep. It's really embarrassing when you miss a sleeping, creeping vine. I'm going to puff a smoke. Oh, Emma. i got to remember to check my ammunition level. 14 damage. Creeping vine, 18 damage. Whoa. Pretty nice damage there. 239 XP. A fallen desk and several chairs lie crumpled on the floor of this regal private chamber. No doubt a place of counsel and costly bargaining. So we're definitely learning a lot more about the castle, but it's kind of a. Uh, I wish to. Oh, I found something! Look at that! Searching through the remains of the desk, you find an old torn parchment which reads Summons of the vicar and mistress to be paid a hundred gold pieces for the sale of the daughter Rebecca. Other parts of the document are either missing or illegible. What is up with that? I guess that's a clue of some sort. I'm not really sure what, what it's about. Go ahead and uh, this would probably be a good spot to take another little rust stop. No, we don't need to rest. Yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and rest up and get it, regain a few points anyway. So you notice it doesn't even bring up your uh, your health all the way. Okay, back to this routine. Open, pick lock, syrup, Shh, failure. Okay, <laughs> back to this routine. <laughs> Resume, back, open, pick, Sarah, failure again, jeez. Not having much luck with this one. Okay, maybe we'll get it third time as the charm. Yep. Okay, and save. And uh, we're in. An encounter. Two huge bats and two regular sized bats. Okay, let's go for the huge bats first, obviously. Uh, I'll try to hide. <laughs> 
don't know if it's worth trying to have him hide. He just has not had any luck. I wonder what, what does this enchanted blade thing do? Is it enchant my blade? You know, I'm going to look it up. It's bothering me. Let's see, enchanted. No, you can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just typing it into the... Enchanted blade. and plowers swords with an extra oomph so that it's easier to hit the swords and penetrate their armor. Okay, I guess it works for the whole party then. That's pretty cool. Alright, Emma. You know what to do. And Kuba. Ooh. He's got a lot of points now. Alright. <laughs> Magic missile, those sons of guns. All right, huge bat bites, shoots, misses, bites, hits. Ooh, six points of damage. Not good. Let's see. I sent the bats to sleep. Magic missile. Boom. Six damage. Boom. One down. <laughs> Kuba again. And he's still going at it. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> he killed two of them. Man. You know, if I had a few more people like him in the party, I would have been finished with the game by now. I swear to God, man. He is just... He's amazing. Uh, Alright, Sarah. You go ahead. Um, yep. Let's go and do a healing spell on old... Uh, on Matt. Okay, we'll just fight. Fight. These are just regular bats, so we should be able to knock them out pretty easily. Okay. Man, Matt, <laughs> hitting the head with a bat, or bitten by a bat in the head. He does some pretty good damage to you, to me. Good job, Emma. Okay, and defeat of the monsters, and they get 139 XP. We get 139 XP. And some more flavor text. Let's see, the majestic splendor faded long ago from this grand hall. The corpse of a decaying dining table, long enough for a half a hundred people, now rests crumbling upon the floor. You know, this, I'm telling you, this feels almost exactly like, you know, I've been playing a lot of D&D &D, uh, using, uh, was it Fantasy Grounds? And this feels almost exactly like that, even down to like the descriptions of the rooms and stuff. It's really cool. I can really see why people love this game so much. It really captures that flavor. You know, of course, all the grinding I could have done without, but... Well, I don't know. I even kind of like that. It's it's kind of relaxing in a way. Just to do something really repetitive like that. It's like popping little bubbles and a big sheet of bubble wrap. You know, some people don't get it. They just think that's dumb, but... <laughs> Somehow it just is kind of soothing if you're having a crappy day and you just get your head up your butt sometimes, you know. Just doing something like that takes you out of that. Uh, get your head out. <laughs> you can focus again after that. It's, it's really therapeutic. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and... Go ahead, you know, go ahead and save, I guess. <laughs> it's just like such a habit at this point. I'm just doing it almost subconsciously. But I want to heal wounds on Matt. Get him back up to full snuff. And we've got a couple more doors here. Almost done. Let's go ahead and open this. Uh, Sarah. Oh, failure. Come on. Why you got to do, why you got to fail? I honestly don't know if there's, is there any kind of skill to this? Are you supposed to, like, time this right? <laughs> okay, save it. In we go. Three bats. Should be able to take them out, no problem. Just use a regular attacks. Yeah, these are just, like, two hit points. Boom, 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 and boom. Nope. <sighs> well, look at that one round. <laughs> they didn't even last one round. An old stone oven and fallen shelves tell of a kitchen where royal feasts were once prepared. 
now it is time now it is time who is the chef and the kitchen has become the meal wait what <laughs> okay now it is time who is the chef and the kitchen has become the meal oh i get it <laughs> it took me to, i had to read that a couple of times <laughs> that's uh what do you call that po poetic metaphorical He's having a good time with this. He's almost like Shakespeare or something here. All right, search nothing. Search nothing. Now that I found like one thing by searching, I'm just gonna be like searching every little corner. <laughs> but I guess there's nothing more there. Okay, back to this routine. Uh, open. She ought to be getting better at this, right? You know, actually, I read in the in the walkthrough that said sometimes you get a skill point from doing this, sometimes you don't. <laughs> so what some people do, they literally keep reloading it, not only to open it, but to get the skill point. If they don't get the skill point, they'll load it up again and try it again. I mean, that's just, you know, I've got limits <laughs> to even my patience with this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you really were serious about actually beating the game, so like it's hard enough just to get the damn thing to open. Uh, let's see, open it. Sarah, come on. There we go. Must be something really bad behind this door. Bare stone shelves line the walls of this former pantry. Oh, it's a pantry raid. Nothing here? Gotta be something here. Search. Search. I wonder if it matters which direction you're facing. Man, I hope not. Well, I guess there's nothing in here. Well, that's not a very satisfying way to end the video. <laughs> there's just, there's nothing. I'll tell you what, let's... I don't want to end it here. That's kind of lame. But I think we've pretty much explored all the doors, right? There's that gate up there. Let's see if we can get through this gate. Yeah, remember this? There's a, there's a gate here, but we have a key to it, I believe. Not sure who's got the key. I found a key a while back. Let's see, who's got that key? Nope. Remy? No. Who did I give the key to? I gotta be. I'm <laughs> gonna go through every person here. Was it Cuba? Yeah, a key of ROM. No effect. So that's not it. Uh, do I have a. Other key? No effect. Okay, well, I guess that's not. I wonder where that key goes to then. Well, let's see. I'll tell you what. Let's go up downstairs again. Nope, sorry, didn't mean to go in here. Let's just go back. I know where there's a big fight. It would be a fun way to end the video. But, you know, it's really, I'm having a lot of fun with this. It is, you know, somewhat difficult. But it's also quite, quite fun. Yeah, this is a big fight. Let's see what, how we can do. Well, it's only three rogues this time. Okay, before I went in here, there were two or three groups of these. <laughs> This ought to be manageable. And go ahead and get that bless. And I'll do the enchanted blade, sure. I wonder what, what does it, if you put more points into it, I wonder if that just makes the effect more potent or last longer. Don't know. Loot. You know, it's weird how this game, it kind of makes me feel like I'm playing a, uh, a combination of other games, right? You feel a little bit of a Bard's Tale-like vibe to it. 
A little bit of a Polar Radiance vibe for some reason. Not sure where that's coming from. Of course, the classical Wizardry games. A little bit of a Dungeon Master-like vibe, I guess. Even though this is not in real time. Just the way it makes you feel as you're playing. Okay, Helm Arrow. Man, if I'd, I'm sure people that bought this game back in, when it came out would have just been in love. It really seems to capture all the stuff that made the old Wizardry games fun, but it's, it's different, right? It's different enough to where it, it feels like a different game. All right, one of these guys left. Yeah, you can see this is flashing now. So that's my enchanted blade working for me. We'll see how long it lasts. Apparently it's harder to raise the, the, the magic that you have to cast only in combat. It takes longer to level up than the one you can just cast outside of combat. Oh, 104 XP, another Cutlass. You know, I'm going to have to go sell some of this stuff to Queequeg. Here we go. Sarah is leveled up again! You know where I'm putting these points. <laughs> Skullduggery! <laughs> Let's see, this room appears to be the barracks, although nothing lies here now except rot rotted, broken cots. Oh. You think that's really all that's in here? Yeah, I'll search a couple of squares just to be sure. I wonder what that search, what stat is affected by that? Captain's Den, no trespassing. A slot opens up on the door, and from behind it, a grotty voice mutters, What's the password, matey? I have no idea. <laughs> I guess I haven't found the clue for that yet. Even if I did, I wouldn't want to put it in the video and spoil it for you guys. Oh, let's do one more door. Man. <laughs> It's just, at this point, I'm just wanting to explore the whole damn thing. Save it. Open it. There we go. What do we got? Oh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, look at this. Three groups of rats. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, this will this will do it. We'll, we'll fight this out and then we'll call it a day. I promise. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm in heaven here. Uh, okay, hide, hide. Go ahead. I want to get that sneak attack going. Okay, let's get my uh, enchanted blade back on. Yeah, that seems to be pretty useful. Now this will be. There's three groups. Huh. I guess I'll send that group in the back to sleep. Uh, Kuba. Well, we could try to send some. Yeah, let's use that sleep spell. We could use that on that middle group. Okay, let's see how this plays out. Uh, plays the loot. Giant rat falls asleep. Bat. One giant rat misses. Hit. Body. Giant rat dies. <laughs> Remy hides. Rat claws. Kuba goes to sleep. Enchanted Blade. Okay, man, this is awesome. Hmm. He did not hide successfully. Come on, guys. I'm going to go ahead and do my bless, too. Yeah. Emma, let's just fight. Same thing. Kuba just loves the whacking a rat with his big bow staff giant rat I bet you Kuba kills it nope missed oh well too bad oh Matt missed too well it does say swords of striking I didn't I didn't know that meant strike out oh, let's see we got those regular rats up there whoa what happened there uh, let's see if we can keep working on that rat in the middle Okay, she is just not going to hide. <laughs> That's pretty clear. 
Okay, Emma. And I. I don't want to wake the one that's asleep up. Rat claws, Matt, hit. No penetration. Hit. Five damage. Miss. Miss. Come on. Boom. One point of damage. Four points. <laughs> okay. This is almost done. Almost done. <laughs> so many rats. It's like a little menu. Which do you want to kill? Uh, the giant rats. Rats for days. Rat misses. Miss. I miss. Miss. Uh, miss. Miss. Oh, come on. That Kuba. <laughs> Six points. Whack. Not quite enough to kill it, but good job. You know, I, I wonder if this enchanted sword, does that only work literally on swords? You know, there's just so many questions. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if that only works literally on swords or if it's given like these quarter staffs bonuses. I honestly just don't know. Okay, rat, rat. You know, let's go ahead and fry these sons of... Mm. I'm going to magic missile that giant rat. I think Koopa deserves that privilege. Oh, but Sarah killed it before you could do it. <laughs> Sorry, Koopa. <laughs> okay, Remy kills it. I think we got one left. Boom. Rat dies. Woohoo! 275 XP, man. Three different groups of those suckers. Uh, the room looks devoid of anything of much import and was probably probably used as a storage area. Okay, well, probably not the most exciting room, but hey, we had a great battle. Oops. What is is this like a little sub room? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> okay, one last. One last thing. I just want to see what's in there. We won't even find it. Okay. <laughs> I can't leave it here. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll take them out quick. Uh, two rats. Um, I'll just go for those regular rats. Spell. Looks like my enchanted blade is still going. I don't know if my Bless is still active, though. Let's go ahead and cast that again. Emma, let's put the uh, that group of three to sleep, I believe. It's probably the right way to go there. Do a magic missile. Give Kuba another chance to magic missile that giant rat. <laughs> okay. Oh, six points of damage, man. I'd hate to die here. Rat. Oh, gee, oh come on. Come on, Kuba. Three damage. You know, sometimes that magic missile seems like it strikes twice. I don't know if it hits every enemy in a group. Okay, Sarah successfully hid. Giant rat advantage. That, that's a very Bard's tell like thing. Although I think Wizardry did it first, actually. Now as I'm thinking about it. Okay, let's go for that giant rat this time. Everybody on the giant rat. Except for you. <laughs> Becky, yeah, let's bash a giant rat. Emma. Maybe she'll get lucky this time. It's good old Kuba. Does he have enough juice left for another spell? Uh, armor shield. I don't want to do that. I think energy blast. Oh, I guess he can cast that. Cool. All right, let's see how this goes. Rat hit four damage. These things are vicious. Oh, what the hell? Do I, am I wearing armor? <laughs> Remy shoots Elm Arrow hit five damage. Oh, Kuba. Spell fizzled. Miss, miss, miss. Oh, that wasn't a very productive round. Oh, look, we got. Okay, these are giant now. Well, this might be a little bit more serious of a fight than I than I thought. 
Okay. Well, let's... They need to quit missing. I'll say that right now. I got Bless going. What else can I cast here? Uh, I guess nothing, really. Alright, just... Hit something! I guess I can try to send that... This group to sleep, maybe. Okay, let's go ahead and cast Armor Shield on Matt. He's just taking too much damage, man. Okay, let's try this. Giant Rat hit again! Man, wouldn't it suck if my character died fighting rats? <laughs> oh, everybody's getting hit. This is a pretty serious fight. There, finally! Good job. All right. Uh, we got left here. I think some of these are just regular rats. We should be okay with just fighting those regular rats. In theory. Okay. Yeah, Becky, let's go ahead and heal up Matt. Uh, do, 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 do. Magic. Um, okay, what else? Emma. Just fight those uh, rats there. Kuba, thwack them with your stick. Let's go. Okay, Remy shoots, hits, one point of damage. <laughs> you know, you think if you hit a, a rat with an arrow, it would do more than one point of damage. How's that thing even supposed to move with an arrow in it? Uh, or Sarah. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, they're still asleep, though. That's good. I think we're going to do this. I'm going to try to hide her one more time. Just I want you to see just once the damage that she can do when she's able to pop out of hiding. It's really, it's really fun. Okay, Kuba. Let's go, Kuba. Bash. Whoa. Six points of damage. Dead. Becky misses. Emma. Miss. Rat. Miss. Sarah fails. Matt hit five points down. Now we just got these two giant rats left. We can do it. You know, thrust. Just thrust in there. Remy, 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 Remy. Becky, Becky, we need to heal anybody? I don't think so. Just fight. Bash. Emma. You know, let's go ahead and loot him. She's getting kind of low on stand, though. Uh, and Kuba, do we have anything left to throw at these guys? We already put his shield on Matt. Didn't really help very much. I think he's better off just sticking to his uh, stick. Stick to the stick. Remy hit. Right in the head, body, giant runs. Good job, Sarah, Becky, come on, oh, Kuba, come on, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> oh, everybody missed. One giant rat left. <sighs> Just doesn't get better than this, folks. Just does not get better than this. <laughs> come on, we can do it. Rat. Oh, hit one point. Oh, come on. Oh, don't die now. It's up. Ah! <laughs> 300 XP. Look at this gaining levels. And oh my God, what a what a rush that is. You know, I'd be satisfied just to kill some rats, but here I go with all this uh, all this bonus. See, an old set of wine racks has crumbled to the ground, but it looks as though they were cleaned out some time ago. Oh, uh, so no wine for this group. Uh, okay, well, let's definitely call it there. We've explored a big chunk of this game. I mean, we're not even really through the first part of the game. I mean, there's so many levels and towers and puzzles to solve here, but you know, I think this gives you a pretty good uh, picture of what the game is like, and you could decide if it's something you would like to explore more fully. You know, obviously there's a lot more story and puzzles and, you know, fun room descriptions. You know, even if they're not all necessarily perfectly proofread and, and edited, who cares? It's kind of like, uh, you know, being with a, the creative uh, dungeon master that likes to put a little bit of flavor uh, into the game. Totally cool with that. And i got to say, this, this feels to me a lot like a tabletop 
This probably feels more like tabletop D&D to me than a lot of uh, more modern computer role-playing games I've played, actually. Uh, you know, it's got that going. I think it's very much in the spirit of a classic Dungeons & Dragons, maybe even more so than those older wizardry games. Uh, problems? You know, what's the negative? Uh, I guess I wanted to give a quick sort of review, capsule review of this. Um, the graphics are, are okay. I mean, they're not... <clears throat> I mean, you think about uh, Ultima Underworld is going to come out <laughs> relatively soon after this. <laughs> you know, make this look absolutely ancient by comparison. Uh, but it's definitely a step up from those older Wizardry games. And, you know, if you could, it doesn't really matter these days, you know, it's that it came out in 1990. I mean, these graphics would have been uh, more than decent back then, I, I believe. Uh, maybe not cutting edge, but certainly serviceable. The uh, music... You know, I don't know if you've been listening like the thump, thump, thump or whatever. That's probably the weakest part of the game, sound effects. Uh, you know, there's not really much to say about it. <laughs> the monsters have some effects, and but I'm not really hearing like anything, any great music or anything that I would even consider to be music, actually. And that's probably the only real negative. Uh, otherwise, I don't know really what to criticize other than stuff that's really not fair. Uh, you know, they're, they're 1990, they're just getting used to, like, m mouse control and <laughs> graphical user interfaces. So, yeah, it's not the perfect uh, interface, but they did what they could. And it's not terrible. It's not unplayable. Probably the worst part of it is dealing with that merchant, Queequeg. I and mean, that's pretty tedious. You know, there, there should have been some more thought put into, into that process. Uh, that could have been done a lot better. Uh, the balance, the difficulty level... Uh, you know, I don't want to really criticize it because, again, it is what it is. Um, if you want something easier where you never die, <laughs> you know, there's plenty of games like that. Uh, <coughs> it can be frustrating, but at the, on the other hand, uh, if you do hang in there and you just stick to it and you try out some different strategies and you figure out what to do, man, it, it starts to feel really good. <laughs> You're kind of, you feel like you've actually achieved something instead of just having it handed to you. Uh, I think if you add this add-on here that I showed you earlier, and it's a free uh, map add-on, that makes it a lot a lot better, in my opinion. So, uh, Is it perfect? No. Uh, is it fun? Certainly, certainly, definitely. Lots and lots of fun. I think you'll really enjoy this. And man, two bucks? <laughs> what a steal. Uh, let's go ahead and pick this game up. You know, I'd love to hear from you if you have played this if you played it when it was new or relatively recent, I'd love to hear what that was like. Or if, if you picked it up and you played all the way through to the end, I'd love to hear you know more about some of the later game. You know, does the game get better? Does it get worse? You know, I always love reading that sort of thing. Uh, you know, later points of the game. Or if you haven't ever tried the game and you watch this video and decide to give it a try based on this, you know, I always love to hear from you too. <laughs> See if your experience compares to mine. But uh, I'll wrap it up here. Really, really fun game. Uh, I just, I love it, really. It's It's got some rough spots, but it just adds to the charm, <laughs> if you will. Uh, anyway, Wizardry 6, Bane of the Cosmic Forge. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. You know, I'm sorry it's taking these videos a little bit longer than usual to come out. Uh, you know, school started a couple of weeks ago and I've just been completely swamped. You know, I'm having to make videos for all those classes now, too, because of the, you know, obvious, uh, you know, again, I don't know when you'll be watching this video, uh, but as of now, it's, we're still kind of stuck in this uh, stay at home, everything online, you know, the Zooms and the uh, videos and all that. So it's... Uh, you know, in some ways it's better, I suppose, but, uh, you know, it does take a long time to make all those videos and keep that side of things going. You know, you kind of have to put your job first. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, folks. You know, the Matt Chat has to come second after that. Uh, but I do try my very best to put episodes out as quickly as possible, still maintaining the quality, of course, but I couldn't do it at all. There'd be zero chance of this happening without you and your support of Matt Chat. So thank you so much for that. All you folks who have stood up to the plate to keep the show going. You know, my goal is, is to get to 500 episodes. And so I've got a little bit of ways to go. I really want to, I don't want to end before I hit 500. And I know you don't want that to happen either. So please, you know, if you're, if you're out of work, you know, 
having trouble financially, don't don't worry about it. You know, just focus on, you know, getting uh, secure that way, staying safe. Uh, if on the other hand you're doing uh, pretty well financially or things are looking up, uh, please do go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon page. Take a few minutes, uh, sign up for an account, and then maybe you'll be in the next party <laughs> uh, I create for one of these videos. I'd like to keep the show going, but I can't do it without you. So please, if you support the show, please continue. And if you're, for whatever reason, debating it, just jump in there. Uh, you really, you know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get a lot more out of the program if you support it. You know, you know, trust me on that. It's Plus, we have a Discord channel. We're having lots of fun uh, with that. All kinds of uh, folks on there now. It's very active. So, uh, Anyway, thank you if you are supporting the show. If you want to learn more, then <laughs> by all means, step up to the plate. Okay, uh, what about that news from the Matt King? You know, it's, it's been a while since I've done this. I just found a few couple of, couple of fun items. I think this was Matt W. sent this in. I know you've been worried about the rats of New York City. You know, those, those poor rats, are they, <laughs> what are they doing, you know, now that everything is sort of uh, locked down there? Well, you shouldn't have feared. Uh, these rats are probably doing better than the people in New York City, it seems. Uh, so Matt sent in this article, New York City's rats are doing just fine. As New Yorkers hunkered down, bought what toilet paper and sanitizer they could find, and started wearing cloth masks, the rat apocalypse was playing out on the eerily empty streets. But we are happy to report that the rodent turmoil is over, and two million rats that live in New York City are doing just fine. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason that tickled me. Uh, okay, what else we got here? Why do... Why do exploding barrels make video games so much more fun? Uh, so I found this little article, and it was talking a lot in there about uh, games like Divinity, Original Sin, where you can blow up barrels, and there's this sort of environmental stuff that can happen, where the the, the stage, I guess, or the, the play space, whatever you want to call it, the, the battlefield, <laughs> uh, can become sort of like an, a player in and of itself, or an enemy, or a, I guess an ally. Uh, so this article delves into what makes that mechanic fun. I guess it's probably more interesting to uh, game designers than anybody else, you know, if you're thinking about making uh, a role-playing game. and You, you probably want to have more uh, environmental stuff in there now if you've been inspired by, well, Divinity Original Sin, but there's several other games like that. So I just thought this article gave a pretty good explanation of that concept and, and how you might implement it. And then finally, our old buddy, Matt, Matt's, Matt's, Matt, so many Matt's. <clears throat> anyway, this is Matt with one T, so you can keep that straight. Matt Bradley Shergi, that, what a guy, what a prolific author. He's out with a new book. This one's $6.99 on, in paperback. You can also get it on Kindle. And on mine, it says it's free on Kindle. I guess it's part of the Kindle Unlimited. I, I don't know how that works, but anyway, you can definitely get it for 7 bucks. It's called Podcast You Nerd. It's podcasting lessons from 15 years in podcast hell as a video game, music, and movie podcast. And so if you don't know Matt, and I've had him on the show off and on a few times, and I actually really love to hire him. He's a, he wants to work for Matt Chat and be like the co-producer and you know help me uh, you know basically be an assistant to get these shows out in a more timely fashion. Uh, you know, the only thing holding us back is just not enough support from the Patreon folks. Uh, we need more people to step up and, you know, bump up the, the level so we can get Matt on board. I mean, we could be putting out like at least twice, maybe three times uh, the numbers of episodes if I had, you know, Matt to help help out. So let, let me just put it this way. Uh, if you want more Matt yet, that's a good way to get it. I mean, it's very possible. Uh, anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's get back into the book. Uh, so this book draws upon Matt's successes with his podcast, Sequel Cast, Sequel Cast 2, and Friends, as well as the Super Koopa Troopa show, which apparently did not go so well. So if you want to do your own podcast or you just want to learn more about some of these podcasting nerds, I suppose, uh, check out the book. You know, I'm sure Matt, you know, I read a little bit of this uh, introduction a while ago. You know, as you know, if you know Matt at all, you know he writes well. He's uh, he's able. I think he's pretty good with the, 
you know, being informative and detailed, but it's never dry. He's, he's got a good sense of humor, and it really comes across. Very snappy writer. So it's something you'll enjoy. Podcast, you nerd. All right, let's wrap it up with a quotation then. And uh, you probably heard that Hank Aaron uh, passed away recently. Very sad if you are, whether or not you're a baseball fan, I guess. I'm not much of a baseball fan. I just remember when I was a really small kid, for whatever reason, I got into collecting baseball cards. And <laughs> I've never even seen, I don't think I've ever sat through a baseball game from start to finish uh, in, in, in real life. But for some reason, the baseball cards really captured my interest. And I got interested in like the statistics on the cards and all this stuff. And of course, I heard about Hank Aaron, and uh, you know he was a really big deal. Really did a lot for the sport. Uh, so I was looking for quotes to kind of celebrate his achievements and legacy, I suppose. And he's got quite a few, uh, but this one kind of stuck out to me, so I thought I would share it with you. It goes something like this. This is Hank Aaron. I never doubted my ability, but when you hear all your life that you're inferior, it makes you wonder if the other guys has something you've never seen before. If they do, I'm still looking for it. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Uh, anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed that, and see you next time. Wax off.